the Drunken Peasants no, no, Podcast. You got to get a weird ah! Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on you, man. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective. Here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Oh, hello everybody. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants podcast, special debate edition. Episode number five, four, five. Five, four, five. And what a great show we have lined up for everybody. Uh, We're going to do a debate for the first time in a long time. Um, feel free to introduce our debaters. Feel the right. fridge. In the uh, upper left-hand corner, we have the master debater and slayer <laughs> of pseudo intellectuals. He went toe to toe with Jesse Lee Peterson. Asked, answered the hard questions. Do you love black people? Are you asking the loves- answer again? <laughs> Do you love black people? I, I don't know, man. <laughs> all black people. I heard him say he loves all black people. I, I, I think that's a good answer. Nice. <laughs> we got Destiny, and he's going to go toe to toe with the creationist cartoonist, the creator, <laughs> the creator of Earthworm Jim, Bigfoot Bill, and many other characters, uh, keeper of the faith. Yeah, so basically the rules are uh, I will read the debate topic, and then uh, one of the two contestants will have five minutes to make their argument regarding the topic. And then after they're done, whether it takes the whole five minutes or they have some time left, they just let us know that they're done. And then we'll give the other contestant an opportunity to, to do a rebuttal of what they just said. And then after that, we kind of open it up to a freestyle where you guys can just kind of argue back and forth. Um, if there is a dispute over the factuality of any of the claims either one of you make, uh, the other person can ask for a source, and if you want to, you could just link a source in the Skype chat. I can pull it up on screen. And that's basically it. Um, That was easy. Yeah, yeah. And I'll start the timer in a minute here. Basically, when the timer goes off, you'll hear the uh, Jeopardy timeout sound, that, and that'll mean that it's time to wrap it up. I'll let Doug start this one since he's kind of making the positive claim here. Uh, basically, uh, just start with religion. Uh, so, Doug, why do you believe in the existence of God and Christianity in particular? Sure. Is this a five-minute thing then? Yeah, I'm going to start the timer minutes, yeah. right now. You don't need to use the entire five unless you sure. feel fit. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up or whatever. Uh, why do I believe in God? Uh, and then and specifically the Christian religion. I believe in God because I believe um, everything demands a cause. That's my first sense, is that when I, see, when I see the earth, I see an effect, and I believe that it, it requires a adequate cause. And those are fancy words of just saying, you know, it, it seems like something made all this stuff. Or the way G.K. Chesterton put it, that it, it's a shame that uh, to have all this stuff and not have anyone to thank for it. So, and I, and to me, it's very strange that we are um, people capable of anger and love and emotion. And so, it, it, when I think about what where we were made from, it would make sense that the cause would also have anger, love, and emotion. That it would be a moral being. So I don't see human beings as the highest evolved anything in the world. I, I just believe there's simply a level higher than us that is likely supernatural, and we call him God. So that's the God side of it, is I just, I just see creation, and I, I think it's rational to believe that it came from a supernatural mind. Um, as for the Christian religion specifically— you know, a lot of that could be attributed to uh, just my cultural upbringing or whatever, though I was raised by atheists, but I was raised in America, you know, not Saudi Arabia or something. But um, I, I believe this, the Christian story is very compelling. Um, I'm a story writer, right? I, I create stories myself. I make them up. And I see a superstructure in most stories that involve 
Um, you, you start by building a world, you create a world and you sustain it or you, you build out the details of it. Usually within story, something goes wrong. And I liken that to the fall. There's usually a hero who rises up, who is exceptional in some way. Usually there's some form of self-sacrifice where he, um, he transcends and there's a kind of a resurrection in story also. And then finally the idea of heaven, which is like a, a happy ending. I just think that that system, that worldview is is all over Western stories at the very least. And it's why I think Miyazaki movies kind of stink because they don't come from the West and they don't always hold those those ideas that we love in Iron Giant and Black Stallion and Star Wars and things like that. I, so I feel like that story is very deep in me. The, the religious story that matches that the best is Christianity. And that might be cause and effect, you know, it might be mixing chicken and egg because it could very well be that those kinds of Western stories came out of that tradition because we came from Christianity. So I'm, I'm unclear on that if it predated it or if it came after it. Um, Joseph Campbell would claim that the, that kind of a hero's journey predated Christianity. I'm fine with that too, because I think if, if God destined and knew that Jesus was going to come, he could have baked that story in the goods long before Jesus came along. Um, and, I'm, and I'll wrap from there. That, those are my big ones on God and Jesus. They both take a similar theme in that I see, I see evidences for God and creation and for Jesus in my love of story. And uh, I just think Christianity is the most bitchin' story. And and it all and and then more importantly, uh, I'm convinced it's true. So when I found out it was true, I went, "Holy cow, I'm in." All right. Uh, Destiny, feel free to, to get started. Yeah, can you, is my mic sound okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you sound good. Real, I don't want to interrupt, but can I, do, do I call you Destiny? Um, I prefer Steven. Okay. So you thanks, pretend Steven. to be a woman know. online. Yeah. What, um, what, per, what name do you prefer to go by? I'm Doug. Doug. Okay, Doug. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'll, I, yeah, I'll go. Um, I guess the first part kind of sounds like a, I, I don't know if we're going for like a transcendental argument here, but the idea that like there has to be some explanation uh, for the beginning of the universe. Uh, I mean, that claim in and of itself is pretty suspect. Like, I don't know if there necessarily needs to be a beginning to the universe. Um, I mean, we could posit a universe that has always existed. Um, even if we do say the universe needed some sort of beginning, I don't know if that beginning necessarily needs to be God. Um, you know, it could be a computer simulation or aliens, or it could be any hundred million different gods. I don't know how you would pick any individual one. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really like that. Um, the idea that we need a God to jumpstart at the physical world. I think there's a lot in there that you need to dig through to actually establish that. I mean, I guess it kind of sounds good um, if you just glance at it real quickly, but I, I think you have to really tear into that because I don't think that it holds up logically, the idea that, one, that the, that the universe needs to be infinite, or I'm sorry, that the universe can't be infinite, and that, two, if it had a start, that there was some god that, that started it, and that we could even know which god started it. Um, the next one, um, this idea that, like, the, the world exists the way that it does, and it's perfect the way that it is, and we can't even imagine the world being different. I mean, we could posit, you know, a million different types of worlds um, with creatures made of methane or with creatures that are much larger, like the dinosaurs or creatures that are, that are much smaller. Just because the world exists and it works in the way that it does now it doesn't mean that it couldn't theoretically work a hundred million different ways. I mean, we have the world that we do now, but, I mean, that's just because, you know, the conditions were such on this planet that life grew in the way that it did. The idea that the planet was created for the life here I think is a little bit um, putting the, the putting the horse before the cart like life came after the planet I, I, I just don't I don't think it's a valid argument to say that the, the planet was created for the life here and that we can't imagine any other type of life existing um, the next part um, I, yeah this idea that like I, I guess I, I just I don't know how to respond to an argument where it's like I can't imagine that life here is random or I can't imagine that life existed this way and there needs to be a creator. There's I can't really say much to that. I mean, uh, I mean, we could all get together and read a million different science fiction stories about how life was started. Uh, the God story is nice because it gives us purpose. But I mean, there are tons of religions and other stories that give us purpose as well. Um, and then for the final point, this idea that we, we tell all of these common stories on, on the planet Earth that all kind of like share these themes and similarities uh, doesn't necessarily point to a higher power. It could just point to some, you know, biological similarity as well, right? Like maybe biologically we all desire purpose and maybe biologically we all enjoy this idea of, say, like hero stories. So every single culture writes a million of these types of stories. I don't think you need a God to explain that common desire among all people to have these, you know, similar stories with these similar themes. And yeah, that's what I got. 
All right. Uh, at this point, Doug, feel free to respond, and it's just freestyle at this point, so you guys can, you know, w- within reason, interrupt one another if uh, if you want to make a point. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, thanks, Stephen. That's that's cool. That's all cool. Um, I I guess uh, it's going to be tough to debate because I he he's, he gave a lot of theoretical ideas, right, Stephen? You said uh, it doesn't necess- the universe could be uh, infinite past. It could be interdimensional. There could be other higher forms that don't have to be God, and and I I agree that those are in the running. I agree that those are in the running, but I gave a, a reason why I believed this was the most likely. And and my reason that I gave, I didn't specifically, I mean, sure, could I, I, I ask didn't you specifically about that? hear. Could I ask you about sure, that reason? Sure. So you say, you sure. claim that you gave a reason that is the most likely. My claim is that yeah. it's the most likely because that's the one that you like. So what I would ask you is, what evidence do you have that our universe was created by God and not some hyper-intelligent race of aliens? What What is sure. your evidence pointing one way or the other? First, I want to go back to your original claim that, that that is the foundation of that comment, which is that you said this is the one that I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. So we'll start there. Um, I'm convinced it's true, and there's two different things about that. So I uh, so I'm already coming from a place of I'm, I'm I, I I just see. Um, like there's things about God that we cu- are culturally trained to despise, like that he would stone a man for eating shrimp. There's no reason why I would like that. There's no reason I would choose that because I liked it. Or the idea that God uh, sends people who aren't of my faith to hell. There's no reason I would like that either. So I, I don't prefer that. That's not, that's not in me. So I'm, o- I'm only starting with that foundation that I have to start with I don't think it's I don't think it's right for you to give that disingenuous comment about me that I that I only did it because I like it. And my only question is, couldn't I also then, if that's the standard we're going to use, is that I like it? Maybe you like, maybe it's not really true for you that there's no God, but that you like that that there's no God, and that's why you came up with all of your arguments. I I, I actually wouldn't put that on you. Um, oh, I mean, you totally could. Um, I, the only reason why I, I'm putting that on you is because it seems like you're, you kind of like beg the conclusion uh, or, you, or you beg the question in a lot of your statements, like saying something like, well, life exists on Earth the way that it does. And I can't imagine it existing any other way. It sounds like I, I, I didn't yeah. I don't remember saying that. I'm sorry if I said that then I stand corrected. I don't remember saying that I can't imagine life on Earth any other way. I'm a, I'm a creative guy. I make other worlds all the time. I actually can't imagine life some other way. I can't imagine it not coming from God. Might be what you're okay, talking may, about. Yeah, then may, maybe I, I misunderstood. Uh, maybe I misunderstood your point there. It sounded but, like you said that like things existed in such a in such a perfect state that like you felt like there needed to be a god to jumpstart uh, that. Or am I? Maybe yeah, I, misunderstood I, I, I didn't say it was perfect either. I don't believe it's perfect because of the fallen state. I think actually things are rather imperfect. Okay. All right. Then, you know, I, then I, innocent I, children suffering and dying is not perfect. Okay. So I guess what was your so then the what was your reason for believing that it was say a god that created the planet over any hyper intelligent race of aliens? Um I I think um I mean I'll tell you why I personally don't believe that. It's not that it 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 could be aliens and brain into that stuff. I don't think people actually believe that. I don't think you believe. I mean I don't believe it either so I don't want to debate something that you nor I believe. Do you believe that we're that there's a that we're brains and vats and this is all an illusion? Um I don't believe I can know about that. I don't think I can have information about that. I wouldn't make claims. I'd be agnostic towards that. Uh, do you believe the universe had a un- had a infinite past that it's always been here steady state? Um I don't think I can know about that right now either. That might be something that science can uncover at, at some point yeah. in time, but I don't think we have that information right now. I think that's something we could probably know about, but I'm not sure. But I don't think we have that information right now. So would it be safe that that, it, that what I'm getting at is that you're probably a skeptic about everything, including Christianity, right? If I said, do you believe in a multiverse, that there's multiple universes, do you believe that? Do we have ways to get information about it physically? No, there's no way. Then uh, then I would say we can't have information about that. Or we so wouldn't you, know about that, yeah. So you're a consistent skeptic about everything, uh, including Christianity, and I'm a skeptic about everything. But one one view that I will, I'm willing to lay some skin down on the game and say, I actually do believe this. I actually do believe that there's a God. Yeah. But are you willing to put skin down on a game on any alternate that you actually believe? Um, no. In, in terms of being able to establish any sort of like absolute truth about the universe, um, no, yeah. I'm very uncomfortable with that. Um, so I will, really, or go ahead. 
so really, it, just for the structure point of this, because I put down something that I do believe in God, that's the only thing we can really debate. Because I don't want to debate what you don't believe. Uh, I mean, you don't believe in God, and I'm saying there is a God. So I don't have to go into all those other bubble universes, rubber band universe, steady state theory, multiverse, aliens, brain in a vat, which you brought up, because that's not really what you believe. The only thing that you do believe right now is that there is no God. Um. Yeah, I don't know if I would say there is no God, but if there is one, I don't think we can have knowledge about that God if there is one. Sure. Um, so you doubt my knowledge of God? Yeah, I don't think you've I don't think you've demonstrated that either deductively or th through any other type of reason. I don't think you've demonstrated that. Okay. Could I know that there's a God if even if I can't deductively demonstrate it? Um, I how in what ways would you know? Like something granted to you via. Um, uh, yeah, that would be one example. Uh, like I, I don't claim divine or... revelation, so I'm not going to argue that either because I, I don't I don't claim to have uh, heard the voice, so to speak. But um, hypothetically, that would be on, on the thing. Is it possible that if there's a supernatural God and you couldn't know him and he gave me a supernatural t talk, could I know it directly that way? Um, that would be a possibility, yeah. I don't think I would believe it if I heard it from one person. I think it would be more likely that it was some sort of mental illness, but that is possible, yeah. I have two arguments that go down that path. Okay. One of them is I do believe in the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, that I do believe he does communicate to me in some way and that he convicts me of sin, let's say. And, I, and, I, and, and so I'm saying that is a more plausible explanation than, say, the illusion of morality or that I evolved uh, to, be, to, to become moral. My sense is that it's probably the Holy Spirit. That's one argument. My second argument is that I do, but while I haven't heard God's voice, uh, I believe I know him, or I should say, I, I believe he knows me, and I can't explain that. I, like, I, I haven't been given physical, uh, you know, he hasn't come and talked to me or anything, but my sense is that he knows me and I know him. Okay, um, let's dig in. Well, we can't really discuss the second one, right? Because you're talking about some personal experience that is inside in, inside to you. I can't, we can't really discuss that, right? So, yeah. Um, I mean, we can, but, but, but can I put it in a category, Stephen? I don't want yeah, to run it. you down this goose, this wild goose chase, but mm -hmm. it's very similar to the way that I love my wife or say the way that I love the ideal of beauty. I can't physically point to you. Oh, beauty. It's right there in that box and it's empirical and we can see it, weigh it, taste it, touch it. I know how much it weighs. I can't do that. It's like, it's immaterial. I've never met beauty face to face, but I know it's my sense is I know it's there. That's a, a platonic, a, a, a Plato argument. The idea of ideals, he claims there's, though there's never been a perfect circle, we can imagine a perfect circle. He's talking about ideals, though there's never been a perfect cat. We can imagine a perfect um, cat. And so I'm only saying like, just as there's such a thing as perfect circleness, there's such a thing as I believe in the same category as God, you wouldn't be able to weigh it. I couldn't prove it to you. Right. Those are things that I can't prove to you, but I think you and I would sense that they're there. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I understand what you're saying, but like, if I were to imagine you, um, or if I were to ask you to imagine like the, like the perfect form of like a gazorpazorp, right? I don't think you could do it because that is meaningless yeah. to you and it's meaningless I to me. Up, I would make up a gazorpazorp in yeah. my head. So, um, I feel like usually when we talk about ideal forms or universal forms, usually we have particulars that we can kind of reference to, 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 to establish something. So if we talk about like the perfect universal form of a chair, I can give you several examples of a chair and then we can kind of build this category in our head. I don't think we can do the same with God. Uh, like there is no particular yeah, form right. of a God. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a one of a kind. There's nothing to compare him to other than if we're moral agents and, and I believe that we're uniquely moral agents in a way that say animals and plants are not sure. at the we, very, at, at the very least, I'd, I'd say that we have a higher morality than them. We could. Well, that's something we would still have to establish because I don't believe that sure. either. Yeah. Sure. Um, what the first part of your argument was that the Holy Spirit communicates with you. Um, how is this, how is this an argument that you could bring me along for? How, how would I ever know that it's that and not like a schizophrenia or something? I actually did this already with Billy and Ben Pye and I totally failed. So <laughs> well, I said, just, well, we should, I, oh, go ahead. well, let me, let me give you my example. I'll ask you the same question. I said, though, I don't know anything about you guys really, or anything about your past. My assumption would be that you've probably done something in your past that makes you feel guilty. And no matter what you do, you can't make it go away. Like it is, it is deep seated. 
Um, and, and I mean beyond rationality, like maybe you stole a piece of candy when you were four. Okay. And, and, and I, would, I would think that if the Holy Spirit is doing his job in them and in you, and I'll put it to you, have you done something in your life that makes you feel guilty, no matter how big or small, but it won't go away? Um, personally, no, but can I say, we'll say yes for the sake of the argument? No, because if you, if you don't do it, then I'm not going to go down that oh, path. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good at letting go of the past. I don't have yeah. things that I like, that I carry yeah. with me. It seems. And yeah. you basically, and you basically, uh, you basically counter what I'm coming up with just in saying, no, I don't. So I, I can't, I can't get into your head and say, yes, you did. I assume you did, by the way, all three of you have, but well, I I'm don't. I'm curious. Let's say, um, let, let's say that I have, that there is something I feel guilty about stealing a piece of candy as a child or something. What would your next argument be? That, so my next argument would be, um, there are competing views, right? On why that happens. Mm-hmm. One, one would be that through all of this breeding, uh, in our past that, uh, the, the animals that were more likely to feel guilt were more likely to survive, let's say, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in this, in our society. Another story would be that there's an actual moral agent that you have sinned against and he sent his messenger to convict your heart so that you would turn to him. Those are, those are two competing stories. Okay. And, and I'm saying I go with the Holy spirit one because I think it makes more sense of the world than the, the, uh, benefits say of survival, because I actually think if I, if I think of how to get my genes, the next generation, that, that rape would be a really good way to do it. Like you spread your seed around, you don't have to really raise the kids and you're just trying to get your world. So I actually think we'd be a lot more immoral than we are given even Darwin said that nature was red and tooth and claw. I think we'd be much more murderous and much more cutthroat, even though I know there's evidence that we are. I can explain evil. I can't explain the good because the good, it's very rare that you see Act, necessary survival benefit to good, even societally. And I don't think mankind's been around long enough, even if you say he's been around for a million years or whatever. I, it just doesn't seem like uh, it would be enough time for all of that DNA to mutate and be put together into a construct in the brain to cause us all to do things like self-sacrifice, or say our, our young military, before they're able to reproduce, this uh, this morality that's in our genes uh, causes him to not think of reproducing but to sacrifice his life for others so um is that a good counter argument no I, I absolutely don't think so there are two different ways sure. there are two different parts that i would address here um so we kind of have like an evolutionary psychology argument which i hate yeah. but i'll defend it um versus well, yeah, I, I don't i don't want to make you debate stuff that you don't well no no I, I just it. i'm not a big i'm not side. a big fan of evo psych for a variety of reasons but I, i'll defend it here and then we kind of have this other argument so so the evo psych argument is that guilt is kind of something that we are equipped with because it uh makes us more in groups it, it helps us survive better than not feeling guilty um and then on the flip side we we have this idea that there is some agent sent by God or whatever um, to, that makes us, f- that, that is convicting us for a sin I guess we've committed and wants to hold us accountable. So the reason why I like the, um, the, the Evo psych argument here is because I think that we can demonstrate more mechanisms that, that kind of show that the Evo psych argument versus the, the, the strange God argument. Ignoring the fact that the God argument carries with it a ton of other claims that are either impossible to investigate or lead us down no good paths, right? Like all the, the claims of creationism or whatever other million things. We don't have to get into that. Um, if, if I look sure. at the Evo psych side, like it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy to see that people that are in families tend to be happier. They tend to be healthier. They tend to grow up stronger. Um, they tend to grow up more social. Um, this idea that rape would be a good way to kind of spread your genes, I think is a a tad naive in terms of understanding how like the social structure of humans work. Like even, you know, 10,000 years ago when you were more primitive, um, we, we worked in groups and we seem to work better in groups. Uh, humans have huge heads and, um, giving birth to a human child is a very laborious process. Um, the, the mothers are oftentimes like, you know, can die during childbirth there's a ton of care that goes into human children you know if you if you juxtapose this with like kittens or dogs that i i think are like walking after like a day 
right? Like yeah. these things are. Yeah. yeah, or baby deer. Baby deer, they walk within hours. Yeah, yeah, with hours, right? Humans need a much higher initial investment in order to start. So if you had like two competing groups of humans and one was a group of selfish rapists that were trying to spare their genes and the other one was a more pair bonded, happy, healthy, um, family, you know, kind of human group or even like social group. It doesn't have to be like the, the man, woman, and then child. It could be a group of people taking care of children, right? The more social group is probably going to have their offspring surviving long enough to reproduce as opposed to the rapist group that would leave the mothers and children to fend for themselves w when the children aren't capable of even walking for, you know, a couple of years. So, yeah, I don't know if I buy that argument that like, well, if it was actually yeah. evolution, we'd be raping everybody. I, I think that the social like structures we have and, and, and I, that social structure is observable in other animals as well. Like, for instance, wolves hunt in packs. Um, there are prides of yeah. lions. But um, Louis C.K. said animals basically just rape each other. I mean, they don't ask for permission. Um, they go I up mean, and go yeah, I mean, humans are a lot more social than than other animals are. Like, I think that I want to say the female clitoris is like I think that women and humans are the only um, females that have sex for pleasure. I, I think I could be wrong on that, but I, I feel like I've read that enough that I hope it's true. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like humans are definitely socially bonded a lot more than others. But I mean, other groups like the, like the big cats, like lions and stuff, have like giant prides and stuff where they all take care of each other. You know, wolves have their giant packs or whatever. And I'm sure there's tons of other animals that move like schools of fish. Like th there are tons of those social groups found all throughout mm -hmm. the animal kingdom. But you, so let me go into why, would you say that you're, you, you said you don't believe in psychological evolution. No, no. Well, let me, I'm sorry. Let me be really careful. It's not that I don't believe in evolutionary psychology. It's that people walked on a lot of really dumb roads. I just don't like, yeah. Cause you can tell a lot of stories using evolutionary psychology. Yeah. 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 That's my, that's a lot of my problem with it too. Mm -hmm. But I'm only, I only want to point out here though, that it's strange to me or it's, it's, it's telling to me mm -hmm. that you find uh, all of these other world views and explanations for anything from the creation of the world to the reason why we might feel guilt, you'll entertain almost anything, but I, but it seems like you have a chip on your shoulder against the Holy spirit. So the reason that, that, ex that explanation. Sure. So I understand. So, um, your argument is kind of like, well, the reason I'm so willing to entertain these other things, even though I don't necessarily agree with them, but I'm writing off the Holy Spirit immediately, which shows that I'm engaging in some sort of post hoc rationalization that I'm like immediately biased against um, holier explanations. I'm, I'm, uh -huh. Wait, I'm, I'm going farther than that, Stephen. Mm -hmm. I'm actually saying it seems like if, if these, if only this narrow uh, God creation, Christian Holy Spirit story is the only one that you're really passionate about re rejecting. I'm wondering if, if it might actually be a tell that there is a moral agent talking to you because it's strange to me that you'll, you will casually entertain uh, arguments that you don't seem to really believe in, you don't really care about, but this one you really care about, which is how we act against agents that we hate, and that's how the Bible describes non-believers. I'm just saying sure. it's weird to me that it took that guess and seems to be getting it right. Okay. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't necessarily speak to that part of your theology, but when, when I look for, so to be, to very, be very clear, when I, when I say I don't like evolutionary psych, it's because it's used in a lot of really stupid ways. And I would say the same about like neuroscience where somebody yeah. believes that they've seen one part of the brain light up and all of a sudden they've discovered some massive, and that's not to say that I think all neuroscience is bad or that I think all evolutionary yeah. psychology is bad. I don't have the education to say that. Um, I just, I hear a lot of those things being abused in pretty stupid ways. So I'm just, I'm careful. I'm trying to be careful of that. Now that being said, um, I, I guess what, if I'm trying to find stories that kind of tell a good tale, I would want these things to, to, to interweave with as many underlying mechanisms as possible. So when I say an underlying mechanism, what I mean is like, um, like if we are, if, if we have children that are raised in like a good environment, something like they grow up to be like happy and healthy, we, we can actually look at like physiological indications or biological indications that these people are growing up happier and healthier, right? They don't cower in fear from everybody. They don't, uh, they're not miserable or, you know, plagued with disease or something you know, something like this, or they're not abused or destroyed or killed by their parents. Um, yeah. These kinds of things. So like if I see children are raised in like a happy, healthy environment where if people work together, it causes them to be happier and healthier, they sleep better, right? All these other things fall in line. Yeah. Um, then these are all like strong. These are all like strong biological indicators that point towards a particular direction to me. If somebody tells me a story about like, well, a God thing speaks to your heart 
but I can't, there's no single mechanism that can ever demonstrate that happening, right? There's no way that we can ever observe that in a laboratory. There's no way that we can test that sure. against anything. We can't even deductively reason that out, right? Um, like, no. yeah, that's It, it would really be hard. stupid to pull out a litmus test. It would be stupid to pull out a piece of litmus paper to try and test for the Holy Spirit. It's like it, you wouldn't even, it doesn't even fit in that category of exploration. Sure. So right? my, my, yeah. So my problem is you could weave me any tale there and I would have to entertain all of them simultaneously and give all of them the same level of credence if there's no way that we can ever like assess the validity of any of these claims. Right. Okay. But, but can I counter that argument real quick that mm -hmm. you made yeah. about that it is hardwired in us, say, to be happy when children are raised right and to flourish as a group and to flourish in marriage and to not be rapey so much. Um, because, because how do you explain then if this is so deeply wired in us, that is, it is actually so deeply wired in us to be social and, and community building and good, even more deeply wired than to be all rapey to get our genes into the next gen uh, mm -hmm. generation. How do you explain why our world and, and our country and our friends and our peers are most families split up? Most boys in America are raised without their biological dad. So what if that programming is the deepest thing that literally made us survive and get us here, it doesn't appear to be so hardwired. You have men smacking women around. You do have men going around raping. You have people raping dolphins. You have children abandoned and ruined in life. So where's the hard programming when it's only happening in such a small percentage of people? Isn't that a counter argument? I'm saying that is far more common. To, for it even to not work, than to work. So just because something might be um, hardwired into us biologically, nothing is truly hard, hardwired into us um, biologically. So we have certain biological... Make, make up your mind, Destiny, Stephen. Okay, so... <laughs> is, it, is it hardwired or not? Um, so, I, okay, so this... So when we start talking about this, this gets very, very, very complicated, okay? Yeah, so I know. We ha yeah, so we have genes, right? We've got genes that express themselves, but they only express themselves in an environment. A gene without an environment does not exist. Um, there is no such thing as a gene that codes for blue eyes if you don't feed, like, the, the fetus, right? Like, it'll just die, right? So, so These you need some level of nourishment. Dog. You need some level of social interaction. You need some level of interaction with your parents, right? There, there are all these stages that you have to go through um, in, in order to grow up into a functional person, right? So genes, so this idea that there is like this strict dichotomy of nature versus nurture, that's an illusion, right? Um, mm -hmm. Genes always express themselves in an environment. So even if something is hardwired into us to some level, um, societally, our society has become so complicated that it is, it is easily possible to conceive that some of these hardwired things have been overridden quite a bit, right? Like... Um, if we talk about something like uh, like polyamory, right? Like people probably slept around a lot more growing up, um, or I say growing up, I'm sorry, like 10,000 years or, ago, like an early man, yeah, yeah, earlier human history. We're probably a lot more polyamorous. Um, I've heard arguments back and forth on that, but say we were, it's totally possible now that we live in a society where monogamy is encouraged and we're pushed towards that so much that that becomes something that you know we're used to. Um, you know, it's but do also, you believe that's in? The, I'm sorry, do you believe that's in the genes that hardwired? From the time that we went polyamorous to the time that we're monogamous, do you believe that's a gene genetic programming thing? Because you're saying there's pressures for us to do that. Is that social something we made up or is that something hardwired in the genes? Because you know there's no way that we could have evolved that fast. Well, so it's to not, have gone from it's it's like a it's like a gene it's like a gene environment, gene environment. Like you could recursively like do this forever. Um, like like Let's say, like, here, like, so it sounds like I'm weaseling out of this, but it, it really is so complicated. Let's say that when you smell a certain smell, um, let's say that when you smell a perfume, let's say you get sexually excited. And I would ask yeah. you, is that biological? Liter that literally happens. Yeah, it's, sure. So if I were to ask you if that's biological or environmental, well, the answer to that is really complicated. In one sense, I mean, my dick is getting hard. It's biological. I want to fuck something. But it's kind of environmental because the only way, the only reason you associate that smell with a woman is because you smell the woman, right? And, and then you have sex with a woman, assuming, right? So you associate well, those and, smells and with Well, and sometimes right? they actually put pheromones in for which you do not have a, a, a choice for what the pheromones do to you. I, I, 
Maybe. I don't know if I believe necessarily in the pheromone per pheromone, but, but let, let's, ignoring like pheromones, right? You can see that you can associate like certain scents with like certain types of things or, or with like food, right? Pavlovian responses, right? If you smell or if you hear a bell ring yeah. and you start to salivate, right? Is that environmental or is that biological? Well, it's environmental because you're hearing a bell. Okay, but the only reason the bell makes you salivate is because you've had the biological sensation of like eating the food, right? So like th this idea of like biology versus like uh, environment is they're very, very heavily interwoven together. So I, I don't know if I necessarily would say like we have the genes that evolved us to have people that play video games professionally um, but it is totally possible that through a very complicated amalgamation of environmental factors we have genes that gave us very dexterous fingers and then we had social um, pressures that you know gave us a society sure. that eventually led to sure. creating a computer right and all of that yeah sure well that's all I got okay <laughs> All right. Then. Uh, ba basically, uh, well, at the end of the day, real, real quick, like the thing that I kind of sure. look for is like I like the structure of so. What science does is science seeks to science will never answer why. Unfortunately, it'll never give us like a purpose. But science kind of tries to put together a picture of things that are, of things that happen. And I like yeah. the idea of piecing together like um, this happens and this happens, and if you do this, then this happens. Um, and and that's kind of what science does. When you start to introduce kind of like these strange religious claims in that don't really fit into any of the established picture, but only stand on their own or in conjunction with other religious pictures, um, I feel like those muddy the waters a lot. And I don't like that those claims are presented with with no real hard, testable, verifiable evidence. And then I, well, I, yeah, oh, I, I, I don't think it's hard and testable, but I think it is common sense that it, that it does make a good case. So I don't think it's strange and I don't think it's odd that we would say that everything that we know of came from an adequate cause and that we have minds and consciousness and it probably came from a conscious mind sure. that we have good and evil. And therefore there, there's probably something good and evil at stake. Maybe I, I actually I mean, wanted to, I would take. Some, oh, sorry. Real, I'm sorry, but real quick. I just the word common sense is kind of like one of my triggers. That's that's a hardcore sure. like begging the question, right? Like if you say common it, sense, you're already assuming that it's something that everybody should know, right? It, it no, I, I'm saying everyone do, everyone already acts on it, so it already it is literally common that people are tend to be more religious than not. It is it is literally common. Okay. It yeah. is common sense that people tend to. I mean, that's that's Dawkins even says that like that's that we, true. we we have a huge capacity in our brain to create religion. Yeah, I would caution so, you with that, though, because most religious people are Muslims. Right. So that would kind yeah. of point to you. Well, no, the the Christians, Christians are still number one. But that I'm not I would never make a case uh, by p sheer numbers. I'm only saying I mean, the way it's trending, it won't be Christians. I mean, if if it continues to trend the way it is, correct. Uh, I, that's the thing is I, I really don't know. And I don't think, I think the that. populations of the, of the Muslim world are growing at a rate where they will overtake Christianity. Eventually sure. if we can sure only stop abortion. Christianity will come back. Um, I yeah. did want to, um, Correct. I wanted to move on to the next topic and it is kind of related to what you guys were just talking about before we do that. I want to remind everyone, if you send in uh, super chats or stream labs, I'll read them at the end of this next topic that we do here. And, uh, Please, if, if you can, feel free to like the stream and share it on your social media. So part two is kind of related to what you guys were talking about. As far as I understand, Doug, you you are a evolution denier, right? Yes. yes. Okay. And I know neither of you are scientists, but I'm wondering, you know, <laughs> in, with with your best understanding of what evolution is, if you could tell us, Doug, why you don't accept the theory of evolution, sure. I'm... I'm Without even asking Destiny, I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, yeah, I'll start. Um, I'm a soft denier, but um, and 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 my faith does not hinge around it. So I'm going to get around that first too. I do believe that you that if I found out evolution was absolutely true, it wouldn't affect my faith whatsoever. Um, that I my reasons against it is um, I read evolution for the last twenty. I'd say at least twenty five years, probably thirty years. And uh, I, I try to read every published uh, journal article I can find on it. I read articles on it, and, and I think most people accept it the same way that Stephen would probably say the way that we accept Christianity is I just think it's just a cultural a cu cultural jam down and a, and a cultural thing that we're stewed in. So I'm going to make his argument here. We are so stewed in the idea of evolution in our society that it makes it far more appealing to a point that though none of us are scientists, or in fact, most people in, in your chat might be not be scientists, you can find all kinds of ignorant people who who find it a, a compelling story, whether if they have good evidence for it or not. So I'm not going to, I don't want to go into the pop, the popularity of it. I'm only saying that 
whether if whether if it's a sound doctrine or not, a whole ton of people believe in it, and I don't think most people can give good good uh, reasons for it. From the evolutionary stuff that I read, they're not saying what the scientists are actually saying about it. Evolution is a theory. You are not obliged to believe in it. It is, it is a theory that, like many things Stephen said, can, apparently cannot be proven in a lab and has not been proven in a lab, or it would become um, much more than a theory. It's not proven, and no one says it's proven. So I'm, I'm sitting here trying to argue against something that no one even believes is proven. Uh, the best evolutionary scientists don't believe it's proven. They believe there's evidence for it, which are two different things. Um, I, 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 I'll, I'll give one example of why I don't believe it is I don't think there's enough time in the world, even if you believe in an old Earth creation of that the, you know, the universe has been here for hundreds of billions of years, and, and I get this from a lot of atheistic scientists, that there isn't enough time in the world to account for the diversity of animals in our world, particularly as what's found in the fossil record of the, uh, you know, the Cambrian explosion, pre-Cambrian era um, explosion. There's such a huge diversity of animals. You know, about 99% of the animals have all gone extinct. Like if you think we have a lot of animals now, it's nothing compared to what once was. There is not enough time in the world for these animals to reproduce and, and ki uh, kick along and uh, create those animals. That is... That's my own sense. You look at us as human beings. Uh, you know, 5,000 years ago, we were all gathering grain. And now our minds pass through the internet, uh, going through tubes of the world's libraries, nothing like uh, grabbing uh, grains. It's strange to me that our mind is always so advanced, no matter where you see human beings, their minds are advanced way beyond where they would have evolved to. The earliest forms of human beings that we've seen, there's two things that we, that are uh, characteristic, is that one of them is that he has tools. In the case of Caves of Lascaux, which is one of the earliest uh, higher-formed human beings that we see, we know that he, he is, one, an artist, because he drew on cave walls. Two, that he was religious, because they are considered religious votive figures. So the, it looks to me like mankind has always been uh, religious artists which is what I am. I go all the way back. I think uh, evolution tries to get around uh, abiogenesis, and I'm always suspect of that, because that just, once you give them um, everything, then they'll just take it from there. And the idea that non-matter can become life is very difficult for me to believe in, that non-matter, through purely natural, physical cause and effect, uh, can assemble itself into incredibly complex proteins that are so far beyond what mere cause and effect, I believe, could account for. Uh, it's very difficult for me to believe that. So it can't, not only can it, ha it be DNA and proteins, it has to be in a structure that can reproduce and pass its likeness on to the next gener generation and be able to create information and get more complex over time. So go back to the single cell, even before the single celled organism, you can't get a, a single cell from a prebiotic soup. That's just that you get a lot of stories and a lot of stuff. I've, I've looked for the science. They're still trying to prove it. And, and anytime someone claims to have proved it, um, it's always negated the next year. Um, and so it, it requires a lot of faith. And I, and I don't, I don't feel like I have to exercise I'm a skeptic, like Stephen. I'm a skeptic. I'm just a skeptic about evolution also. All um, right. Yeah, I mean, like, so evolution, the theory of evolution, I think, is the theory that seeks to explain, like, how life became as, as complicated and diversified as it exists today. Um, I mean, like, we, we, what we kind of just got was, like, a really long kind of got of the gaps argument. Um, I mean, like we can kind of run through here point by point. I'm not, I, I did not bring up God though. I said there were gaps. Yeah. I didn't but say I there mean, was like, a God of the gaps. Yeah, I said there's I, gaps. Sure. It just, it feels I'm sorry like, for interrupting. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, if I ever say anything you disagree with, interrupt me immediately. It's totally fine. I'm, you'll never find me. Um, I, I guess like I, every time I hear you say something like, well, we don't know this thing. Um, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, I know the answer to everything or that biologists know the answer to everything. I mean, it's true that we don't know a lot of things. Um, I, I just, I, I'm hesitant to rush to, to use God to explain anything that we don't absolutely have the answer 100% to now. 
Um, I mean, insofar as a, a biogenesis, I don't know if we've ever demonstrated life from non-life. There might be experiments that do it. I do know that like when meteorites crash land on the planet, like even those meteorites have amino acids on them. Um, I mean, I don't think it's entirely inconceivable that, that life can come from non-life. I, I'm actually, I don't even like that sentence because the way that we define life in and of itself is kind of arbitrary, right? If you're, if you believe in a physical world, I mean, what is life versus non-life? Like is, is a rock living? Um, I mean, we say no, no to that. Because no, it's it not living. But science will tell you a rock is not living. Well, science can't tell you that it has to be philosophy, right? How we define life. Yeah. That's, a, that's a philosophical assertion. That's a normal. But if you but, mm -hmm. but if you philosophically said a rock was living, I mean, come on. Well, sure. But how about something like a virus, um, something that hijacks something else and uses it to reproduce? Is that considered living? It meets some criteria, but not other criteria, right? So, it's true. Um, so, so like, they, they, like, I think I'm pretty sure like we don't consider amino acids living, but when they come together and it's they form true. complicated enough life, um, I, like, I, you know, I've got, I've seen like the, there's like a nature report where there's like an observed evolution of a single cell algae evolving into a multicellular organism over the course of 50 weeks because they introduce like a predator into the environment that this thing exists in. Um, so, I mean, and then I know, um, uh, fuck, no. Oh my God. Um, the evolution guy, not fucking Dawkins. He said that, and that's the name. Janet. Are know. you talking about uh, Lawrence Krauss? Fuck, Krauss? I don't. I, fuck, no, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, oh, fucking Darwin. Fuck, yeah. Um, didn't he? That, <laughs> oh, that guy. Sorry, yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy, not Dawkins. I, Dawkins is sticking in my head. Um, but like, I'm pretty sure that we've observed over history like slight changes like in populations of animals and whatnot over time, like adapting to different circumstances and whatnot. Um, sure. So, I, I mean, it's not entirely inconceivable that genes change over time, that different species are created that are more adapted to an environment after random selection or natural selection, I should say, happens that acts on random mutations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, all life on this planet seems to share like a lot of similarities um, in terms of like genetic structure and makeup. I mean, if you look at like the fetus of like a, a cat and a pig and a human, they all look pretty fucking similar until, you know, six weeks in or whatever. Um, but isn't that an evolution of the gaps? You said it seems. And so you're filling in with philosophy what the data doesn't show. The data hasn't demonstrated. You oh, no, I'm sorry. A... I shouldn't use the word it seems. I mean, we do share. We absolutely share a ton of similarity genetically with. with uh, uh, what do you mean? No. It, I, 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 I don't buy that. I don't buy that. It's Wait, uh, which part don't you buy? That we don't have a lot of similarity genetically with other life on this planet? Yeah, and, I'm, and so in, in science, there's this thing where uh, um, correlation does not equal causation. So because something is like, something is not proof that it was caused. Sure, that's that's science. So I'm, 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 I, I hold science to its own rules to be able to get around evolution. So you, you have no right to intuit that just because we have a likeness of DNA, say, with a daisy, you know, 60% likeness, because I would just say, well, you know, I, I paint uh, five different characters and they all look like the same style, mm -hmm. that it, it could very well be arguing for a creator as much as it is a cause and effect in evolution. Um, you still, you still can't observe it. You can't, I do, by the way, I believe everything that you've said that's demonstrable, I believe in. So, yeah, so species really, changing over time or adapting mm -hmm. their environment, totally believe in it. You don't got to even convince me on that, but you know, that is not the origin of species. Well, it hasn't been demonstrated. Yeah. So nothing that you just said disagrees with me. Um, so what yeah. I was saying was that we, we share, I said, we seem, but we share a large genetic similarity with everything else that exists on this planet. Um, such that it now, this is the, where I'll say it seems like we originated from, from common points. It seems to be the case, um, for you to say, well, that could be evidence of a creator creating us for some common point. Um, mm -hmm. sure. But in that case, then we both still agree with the theory of evolution. The difference is you're saying you're, you're kind of going with the clockwork or the, or the clockmaker argument where God started evolution at the beginning. And I'm merely saying I, I don't know where it started from or it started from natural causes. I, I don't even have reason to believe that in the clockwork theory of evolution, though, that sure, God started not. it and evolved it. I don't even have enough evidence for that. Sure. So but I'm, I'm saying, saying if we both agree that we share a large similarity with other life on the earth um, and we agree that it can kind of differentiate via natural selection, then we both agree with the theory of evolution. We just don't know where life started. Like, I I don't think the theory of evolution necessarily claims to know like the origins of life. It's more like a, a descriptor for how life kind of changes over, over time. Yeah. I don't believe, in, I, I don't think I have an obligation to believe anything about evolution. I, I do believe that say we have common molecules with rocks. It does not demand that I believe that we're related. Well, here's a question. Do you believe that like two parents with blue eyes are more likely yeah. to give birth to a child with blue eyes instead of a child with brown eyes? 
Yes, but that's not that is not uh, that is not uh, creating information through purely natural means. The information is already there in both parents to create either those blue eyes or those brown eyes. Okay, or do a you blind think child. That, um, sure. Do you think that um, if you don't take a full round of antibiotics, do you believe that certain um, antibiotic resistant bacteria has a higher likelihood of surviving and reproducing more bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics? Absolutely, but but all, in the hundreds of cases where we thousands of cases where we see bacteria mutating and changing, there's always a deleterious uh, thing that is happening to the cell. That is, it is breaking down to gain that mutation is actually becoming a weaker form of a, of a virus, even though it's strong in this one area that's very important to be able to get around a, to be able to get around a vaccine. It weakens itself in another way. So for instance, the malaria virus, you know, uh, uh, if someone gets the malaria virus, they're more likely to be resistant to AIDS, but they're 10 times more likely to get sickle cell anemia, they found. This is Michael Behe's work. Um, and, and, and what they find is that the cell, even so even though you catch the cell, and fine, you have avoided AIDS, but now you're more susceptible to sickle cell anemia. More information was not created for your body to be able to mutate and get around the AIDS virus. It, it did not gain information. It broke something in the cell. And we know from cause and effect by just looking at normal inertia, that's generally the way that, mater that materials work in the world is that things tend to break down. They do not gain information. So I'm saying, what is the story for how we gain information from a single cell to something more complicated? Would you don't you, see me. You don't see mutations. Would you mind defining what you mean by information? Because I don't. I'm not yeah. very clear on it, and I don't think it's clear to everybody here. Sure, I would say that that if you if you just compare a single cell to a human being, there's more information in a human being than a single celled organism. We're we're more complicated. That's empirical. It's true. We're more complicated. Human beings, with all of our cell and all of our abilities and all of our stuff are more complicated than a single cell organism. So the, so that's a, you have a single cell organism, which is where, where we claim to have come from a single cell organ. We didn't come from a multi-celled organism. We came from a single celled one that became a multi-celled, that became a trilobite, that became a squid, that became a da da da, walked up on land, da da da. You know what I mean? Each one of those stages, every single stage of evolution, which has not been demonstrated, claims DNA, your DNA gains information that is not empirically shown anywhere, even though according to evolutionists, that's all we've ever done. It ought to be happening everywhere. You ought to be gaining information at the DNA level because that's, we, we ought to be really good at it by now because we went from a single cell to a human being. And it's strange how little they see of information being gained. Instead, what they see are mutations, overall lesser things and things getting chopped off and chipped off and degrading over time. Is what we uh, see. I mean, like you would have to bring on like a like a microbiologist to explain. Yeah. Like I, I know I the gist of how like evolution works. I mean, like the claim that an evolutionary uh, or, or that, that evolution makes was that you basically take an organism and through small adaptations over long periods of time, eventually these things will become so genetically divergent that you've created a new species or whatever other um, bridge. But I mean, I, I can't explain the exact like underlying sure. mechanisms for how that happens. I, if I, I wish that I could, I feel I feel kind of yeah, bad now because I'm 99% sure. Even yet that, you believe it. Well, I mean, I also can't explain like how like a combustion engine works, but I drive my car every day. I mean, just because. Yeah, I... well, well, and I can't explain how the Holy Spirit works either. So I don't. I have as much hard evidence for the Holy Spirit as I do for evolution. Well, but the, but the uh, claims that you, evolution... you reject one of those, and I reject one of those. Well, but the difference is that the framework that gives us evolution also gives us things like medicine. The framework that gives us religion. It's not true. It's not Our true. understanding fact... of biology and everything. What do you mean? No, it's not true. We we had medicine before biology. Sure, and biology and our understanding of biology has given us more effective medicines and medications, of course. Yeah, I agree. I agree, but but that doesn't but that doesn't tell us that that, that is not an argument for evolution. Well, no, but it's an argument that points that evolution is probably making stronger descriptions or more accurate descriptions. Probably. Of Probably yes, because I'm being very careful with my words because I could be wrong. I could be there But what I would say is that but I'm, I'm gonna use probably in a stronger sense than I would for for your religious framework Right. What I yeah. would say is that the fact that because I'm also scientific anti-realist, but we won't go there Right, but I would say that the fact that biology are a greater understanding of biology fact, has led us to produce fact, Right. Yeah, so what I'm gonna state is the a fact. fact that biology is biology a fact well, It's a collection of statements that we believe to be true facts. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd rather that that's better 
Okay. I, I should say that's more true. Okay, I'll try to be more clear. So, well, well, wait, hold on. I didn't even get to my fact yet, actually. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. The, I'm no, sorry, no, I'm, that's I'm, okay. I'm that's different. okay. The fact that biology, the greater understanding of biology, has allowed us to create more effective medicines or things like vaccinations seems to point to the idea that biology is giving us a more accurate underlying description of what is true or what is a physical reality or um, a, a, a physical, yeah, physical reality of the world. Um, as opposed to religious frameworks that didn't seem to produce those effects, right? So, for instance, so um, just to make this clear, if I can investigate two different ideas, one is biology and one is religion, investigating that religious pathway doesn't seem to turn out very many good empirical, um, val too, too much empirical value for the world in terms of like producing medication or whatever. But Do you believe murder is wrong? No. Um, but studying okay. things like biology does. It seems like that did give us a greater understanding of, of medication and, and stuff like that. So it seems like biology is making better descriptions of hopefully what is actually physical real, physically real. Whew, sorry. Okay, there you go. Mm. Mm. I think, uh, well, I don't have any problem with anything demonstrated in biology, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it makes well, you, sense well, to me. Well, but you do, because it seems like did you take a great, great issue with the theory of evolution, which I think I'm pretty sure like every single scientist that studies biology is going to agree in, or more. That's, that's not true. That's not true. Like ninety nine point nine 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 percent. Not it's not that high either. And a lot of the a lot of the anti evolutionist guys that I read are atheists. Okay. In my understanding of it, the widespread scientific consensus. Now there might be like a PhD of of, of yeah. like uh, of physics or some other non biology yeah. discipline that believes something else, or like a petroleum engineer. But people that actually study biology are overwhelmingly in support. Yeah. Uh, or, or if they're not in support of the theory of evolution, then their critiques of it are very nuanced and very finite and don't point to like uh, holier explanations for the source of life. That, that's my understanding. Is an appeal? Is an appeal? To a group of experts like scientists, mm -hmm. authoritative? Sure, yeah. Okay. Well, scientists called doctors mm -hmm. uh, overwhelmingly believe in God and Jesus Christ. So, so given their authorities on the human body, does that lend any credibility to their statement? Because uh, the scientists, you know, I still think they have to demonstrate their, their work in just a whole body of them. I don't buy it. Do you, do you well, buy I mean, it? Doctors? Well, so you said that the majority of scientists believe in God or Jesus Christ. We're not talking about God or Jesus Christ. We're talking about evolution right now, the theory of evolution. I know, but I, I'm, I'm using an appeal to authority to see if it will convince you, because I'm not convinced by your appeal of authority, sure. but so you I seem to say... be convinced by authority. So I'm saying, do you, are, you, are you convinced by that appeal to authority of these? No, because and I would say you're People using... that go to seven years of med school know the human body better than you and I, and probably even most scientists, and yeah. they believe in God and Jesus Christ. No, because I would say that... to their authority. No, I would say you're using a fallacious appeal to authority. So mine's fallacious and yours real. I, I would say all appeals to authority are fallacious. Um, I don't necessarily think you would say that. So the reason why my appeal to authority is wait, 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 uh -huh. wait. When so, when uh, when scientists when Pangaea was first discovered, a scientist flew it up the flagpole, and the overwhelming scientific authorities said it was false. For a hundred years, they they rejected Pangaea. Sure. Okay. Wait. So let me go back real quick and, and explain this. So. Um, a fallacious appeal to authority is when you appeal to an authority figure um, in, in lieu of providing evidence or when you appeal to an authority figure that exists outside of that area of expertise. So, for instance, sure. if I, let's say that I say, um, oh, you know, my friend is the best janitor in the whole state. He's yeah. going to give me financial advice. That's a fallacious appeal to authority. Now, right. if somebody says, what should I do with my kitchen sink? And I tell them, oh, well, my janitor friend said this. He's the best janitor in the state. That's not a fallacious appeal to authority. So when I talk about a if I talk about like the, bi the, the scientific consensus Amongst biologists on the theory of evolution, that's not a fallacious. Amongst evolutionary biologists yeah, also. Sure. That's, I don't believe well, that's a fallacious appeal to authority when I say this is what they believe in. Now, if we were talking about that confirmation their... bias? Because if I quoted a bunch of creationist biologists, they would say there's no evidence for, for evolution. Well, you're Still biologists. Term, yeah, but they're going to be very fringe. Like, it's not going to be the academic consensus. No, you have to define fringe, though. You just mean they disagree with the majority, just like the guy who believed in Pangaea. I don't or think the big our bang, evidence, or the Big Bang well, theory, which was which was initially rejected, a Big Bang theory discovered by a priest that was initially rejected by science. So I don't think um, I don't think the evidence that we have for the theory of evolution is going to be on par with the evidence that we have for Pangaea. This is you ever watch it's all, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. 
So you're making the argument that Mac makes, like where science is a liar sometimes. Like just because science has been incorrect in some parts of history doesn't mean that all scientific claims have the same level of validity as every scientific claim that's ever been made. I mean, at one well, point, I, scientists I would... and doctors said that we should drink mercury to cure ourselves. That doesn't right. mean that when a doctor tells me that a, a flu shot is going to help me against the flu, I'm going to say, well, you also told me to drink mercury 200 years ago. So, you know, it's like, get out of here. You know, like I'm not going to say that because that would be incredibly but my point is, while they're telling you to drink mercury, you can't tell the difference between the good scientist and the bad ones. So appeal to authorities, appeals to authority are dangerous. Well, I mean, the alternative to an appeal to authority is that I would have to investigate every single matter on my own, which I can't do as a human. Yeah. I can't investigate whether or not the building I'm in is going to collapse right now. I can't investigate if the computer I'm using is a bomb and is going to explode, if my car's engine is going to explode, if a store that I go to, like, they, you have to rely on authorities around you. Our, compl our civilization is too, just too complicated not to, right? Sure. Is, is origin of species or, or the, the beginning of life or if there's a God or not, is that a philosophical uh, expertise or is that a scientific expertise um, whether if there's a god or not well th th for those things we would have to depend on the particular topic but right now we were discussing the, th the discussing the theory of evolution and I believe that's like a heavily academic topic I don't think there's much room for philosophy because we're just making a bunch of descriptive or, or value claims that are non-moral about h how life works like in terms of how life do you explain that a majority of scientists claim they see the appearance of design in the physical world there there's an appearance of design in life um the majority of scientists are fucking horrible when it comes to anything having to do with philosophy so i would just laugh it off and say okay that's great i, I mean like okay. when we look to science we look for descriptive claims philosophy we leave to the philosophers because most scientists are horrible at it because anything outside of stem blows their mind so yeah, but I mean, it wouldn't right. surprise me if a lot of if a lot of scientists were to say that. It's very easy to fall into those types of traps where if something looks like it works, then it must have been designed to work that particular way, and it's impossible to think that it could have worked in any other way. But that's just kind of like a, a that's like a circular trap that's very easy to fall into. But no, I don't I don't look to scientists for philosophy. I would look to a philosopher for philosophy. Sure, fair enough. All right, and I think we're going to move on to the next topic in just a moment here. I'm just going to read through some of the Super Chats and Streamlabs that came through. Quick reminder, guys, uh, if this is your first time watching us, welcome. Hit the subscribe button and the like button. And if you uh, – <laughs> you might want to make sure you're still subscribed yes. because sometimes YouTube – They fall off. Automatic yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Blue, $2, do you love black people? I think he already answered that, though. Um I do. Always watching gave us ten dollars. I've watched y'all for years. This is my first time being able to donate. Take it, you scammers. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Amy Good. Midnight, five dollars. Doug, do starving children exist? Ben, please explain. We have this. Uh, we have this creationist Christian guy that comes on, oh, and great. he doubts even the existence of starving children. He okay. says God will give you what you need <laughs> if you if you seek it. So. Um, uh, I'm Baton gave us twenty dollars pipe down and have no fear. I'm Baton is here. Perhaps one day I can come on the stream and learn y'all some science. I love Earthworm Jim, but if the God of the Bible were real, he's a fucking piece of shit. Thankfully, he's <laughs> no more so than Thor. I like Thor. Yeah. Uh Jables five dollars. I just want to say I'm finally taking the time to watch this one live. Uh, see you guys around. Yeah, thanks, Jables. Jables, a local guy here. Uh, another one from Jables. I just want to say hi. I'm finally taking the time. Oh, no, no. He gave us another one. I just had the information argument with my mom last weekend. It's not that more information is gained or information is lost. The uh, The minor changes that build up to what appears to be a gain of information or a massive change. Uh, I'm baiting $20. Billy, I saw your face. Humanity currently accepts over 5,000 gods. Choosing one is probably better odds than roulette. Just kidding. <laughs> There's no god. We're all just afraid to die. I have an original Sega Genesis and Earthworm Jim. <laughs> yeah, my people. My Jim people. Yeah. I made them for you, for my non-believing friends. I made them. <laughs> so... As far as I understand, I believe, Doug, you would consider yourself a conservative, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and Destiny, I've heard him describe himself as more liberal than most. Would you say that's fairly accurate? Uh, well, I'll go with the term progressive. It's probably good. Progressive. Sure. Okay. All right. So first thing I wanted to start with, and we can let Destiny start here. Um, 
What's your overall feeling about Trump's performance as president and topics related to it, like the wall, the Mueller investigation, North Korea and whatever else you can think of? How would you rate him as a president so far? Um, when you say rate him, like how do I like him or has he been good in getting his yeah. policies passed? Um, oh, in terms of like how I like him, I mean, I think he's horrible. Um, I'm very big for whatever reason. I'm still hung up on the idea of like liberalism, um, you know, individual freedoms and all that. And I think Trump pushes us in a very scary kind of total or authoritarian slash maybe fascist direction. Um, and I'm very much opposed to that kind of stuff. All right. And I think at I this can... point, you guys, are, yeah, you guys are just better going back and forth. I'm just throwing out the timer for sure. you. Feel free to sure. just. Hey, and and can I can I plug my show? Oh, absolutely. And links in the description for both. Uh, oh, never mind. Here. Never mind. It's in the description. I, I got a bunch of your your audience came over to my fans and it bumped up my uh, my subscribers. I'm trying yeah. to get over ten thousand. So thank you guys. Yeah. I'm a I'm a philosophically I'm a conservative because uh, I believe there is there are true things worth conserving more true things worth conserving than there are bad things that we believe that need we need to be liberated from. So I. While I there are I have liberal tendencies, um, I lean toward conservatism. Uh, as far as have, uh, yeah yeah Trump, as far as Trump goes, I think he's a terrible man, and a fantastic president. <clears throat> so, I and, and I mean a foul awful man. <laughs> so I, I don't have to go down his list of sins. Um, I think he's terrible, but I think. Uh, if we look in the past among all of our presidents, uh, most of them have been terrible men. Most of them uh, screwed other women, cheated on their wives, told lies, took money, manipulated people, um, scandalously um, so tore apart their, their what, opponents. What makes, him a, what makes him a fantastic president? Fantastic president is that's where if you remove all of the, if I remove all of my emotions aside and just say, what has he done? What has he done? Has he done? Has he taken care of the republic? Are, are we doing good? Um, economically, I can't imagine it going better. I think uh, we have uh, more prosperity. In, f in fact, all of your super chatters and the guys that are paying in are proof of it, that we have more expendable income where we get to spend on entertainment for people we love than we ever had before. And so you, and you have people able to live their lives almost entirely online and just play hours and hours of video games instead of going into a coal mine and have to work for their, just to get food. We have so many calories that Brother Billy here is going to die from too many calories, and so he's been shedding them like crazy. Yeah. Even our impoverished have, have the highest obesity rate in history. Our, our impoverished people have highest rate of obesity and diabetes. So I'm saying just purely from a human flourishing standpoint, black unemployment is lower than it's been since since recorded history. I mean, probably since the 1950s, I believe. So I'm saying, is Trump doing good with our society? Um, I mean, I'm saying all things being equal, yes. Obviously, it doesn't take away the $22 trillion debt and all these other, you know, pr problems I have with the man and the lies that he's told and stuff like that. But overall, if we show up in 2020 and everyone still gets to vote, uh, he apparently wasn't that totalitarian. And I, and I do believe our republic is secured so long as the Constitution's in place and we survived the last president. I survived Obama. I thought he was a dick. I survived Bush and he was so-so. And even though I, I like the guy personally, he's, he's a hero of mine. I'm just saying, if we all get to vote again and we have the Constitution in place, America's clicking along, man, when you get you know, asked for your vote. I think that's a great case for Trump as far as him not being an unmitigated disaster or Hitlerian or totalitarian or whatever. Uh, if he runs for a third term, yeah, I'll change my opinion. <laughs> uh, I think he uh, – I know that Stephen just said that he really is a, a fan of, of freedom. That's why he's a liberal, but I believe you'll find far more freedoms over on the conservative side. It is the conservative side, conservative side, the one to op keep the internet open. And it's the liberals at Twitter that, that say, uh, put me on suspension the other day for saying there were only two genders. They don't respect freedom of speech. It's always the liberals that go hunting for other people looking for uh, who they can deplatform or unemploy um, because of their belief system. I think we're far, I think liberals do far better in a conservative world than conservatives do in a liberal world overall.
I think, I think, and, that, and that's because we actually are for, for freedom. I think actually liberals and, and progressives and leftists are actually will live in a freer world in a conservative world than conservatives will in a progressive country. So we're actually more liberal than the progressives are. If you want, if you want a better home for you, come over to, to the conservative side because we one, actually believe in protecting your freedom of speech. Go ahead. One thing I do want to point out before Destiny uh, yeah. gives his take on this is actually Destiny, I believe, has a lifetime uh, Twitter ban, right? Something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then, you, then, then you then you beat me on that because it means you have bigger balls. Though I'm trying, I'm trying hard, Stephen. Okay. I keep saying there's two genders, and uh, I, I'm waiting for the lifetime ban on the next one. I've often been mistaken for at least three genders. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of your cup size. Yeah, big old titties. Um. I, I'm not even sure where to start. We, I mean, the sure. easiest one is the internet freedom one. Um, sure. So do you think that private platforms like Twitter should be allowed to permanently ban people for any reason from their platform or no? That's a, that's a real good uh, question. And I know the trappings on both sides of that. And I don't know what I believe that. I only know that I want one standard for all businesses. Sure. And I want to buckle them all into that standard no matter what we choose. So it's either you have the freedom to associate and do business with whoever you want and you can throw out whoever you want or – you have to serve everybody no matter what, be it Alex Jones or David Duke or a homosexual couple or whatever. I would prefer that because I'm more into freedom. I'd rather have a platform that every once in a while was abused by racists and probably pedophiles and who knows what else than, than trusting a state to come in and start locking everything down and picking and choosing who's being hurtful to who. I don't trust the government and I'm suspicious of collections of power sure so let's say that you were a private company and let's say that you paid for your own server farm so you have your own housing yeah. area you've got servers in there and you're hosting content and some people were posting stuff that you just didn't want on your site and you wanted to remove it and then the state stepped in and said no we are going to force you to host everybody else's content do you think that's yeah. more freedom of speech than allowing you to do what you want with your private business that's way less because I do not trust the internet in the government's hands. I'm, I'm for limited government. The less I can put them in charge of, the better. Well, so I, how in, can you in have principle, I would not. How can I don't want to build a government big enough to make everything fair. Well, then how because can you be, enforce these standards that you want on companies like Twitter and tell them not to ban anybody? If I, you know what? My, my position, Stephen, usually is, and I get a lot of flack from this from my, my Trumpy friends. Uh-huh. Is I say I, I hope a conservative competitor will come up and build their own server farms and build their own Twitter and build their own Facebook. I believe in I really do believe in the free market as a better solution. Sure. So my, my, my the, the, the double standard that I'm getting at here is when you say that Twitter banning people is against freedom of speech, that's actually yes. Twitter exercising the yes. freedom of speech. As a private company, yes. you're allowed to yeah, yes. as long as you're not we, discriminating. We, we agree. We we agree. I was being uh, sloppy in my words. Oh sure, okay. Um, yeah, I, so, I didn't mean the constitutional freedom of speech. I meant that I, I do think that in principle, for instance, once we constitutionally say that everyone has civil rights, then it, that, that cultural acceptance ends up being what provides the energy for the Supreme Court to go in and create the Civil Rights Act in 1964. So the government steps in once, once culture kind of starts providing some arguments and some permission for it. And I'm hoping that um, when I, but my, my point is that in principle, even though I can't, we can't constitutionally say that Twitter is the government and ought to recognize free speech, I do believe that we all generally value the principle of freedom of speech and ought to. Yeah, I guess I, it's just they, like there, it's not as simple as like, when you say like a private company shouldn't be allowed to ban anyone, the reverse of that is you're saying they should be forced to host any content posted on their site, which yeah. it, that's not a very yeah. clear cut like freedom of speech thing. Um, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a dichotomy, though. It's a false dichotomy because just because I'm saying they shouldn't, that's a moral word, doesn't mean I want to erect a government over them to force them. I still say morally okay, they should allow you sure. on Twitter. Okay, let's back up and refocus on so that because it felt like we were talking about like the United States and the role of the government. And now yeah. when I've kind of pushed on this, now we've backed up into like a, a more wiggly moral area. So do we want to talk about like, I guess Not like wiggly. moral It's impar- a principle. 
Okay, sure. So do we want to talk about like moral principles or are we going to talk about like legal or constitutional principles? I, either one's fine with me. We should stick to government if we're going to do conservative versus liberal politics. So okay, correct, sure. I agree. Back on track. Yeah, when we're talking about things like liberalism or conservatism or, or liberal versus conservative, um, yeah, then I agree we should stick to government. So in terms of the government then, um, I wouldn't be comfortable having a government that forced private companies to host all content if those private companies didn't want to. Would you agree with that? Or I do you agree. Think that yeah, okay. So then you're okay then that Twitter should be allowed to ban people or deplatform people if they want to. I, I'm not comfortable with it now because it's not fair. Because Twitter um, it, uh, gets a preferred customer status with the government in that they, because they keep saying that they're a, that they're a, they're not an editorial side, that they claim to not editorialize their content. They get certain benefits as a, and uh, favorable practices in their, their use, they, that's that, uh, Wait, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Like proposition, it's two, the two thirty. what is it? Two thirty, where they, they enjoy this principle. I'm, I'm not smart enough to know it cause I'm not a legal guy either, but I've read all the legal guys on this topic that they get some kind of a preferred status because they don't edit content. That's what they claim. That's why you can't sue Twitter. You can't sue Twitter. You can't, persons can't sue Twitter and Facebook for editorializing content. Oh, that sounds like that, what basically they don't want to be held responsible for what's posted on the site then directly, right? Yeah, but the, it's a special legal status that they have with the government that prevents it. So yeah, that saying, sounds like they're going to start sounds... editing sites. Mm -hmm. If they're going to start editing content, they basically become an editor. They're more like a, you know, an actual editorial site than a open-ended blind publisher. Yeah, that and sounds I want like them a, to act like one or the other. Well, that, what you just said sounds like a really good, oh, so you're claiming that by banning certain people, they are editorializing it? Yeah, and, yeah, and, and both well, wait, Twitter can I ask you and a Facebook, what, Twitter, what? Facebook, and Google do not want that law to change. That, whatever the law is called, it's something 230. They don't want the law to change because they want to get this preferred status as a preferred business. And I'm saying, if you're going to act this way, then you need to remove that preferred status with the government. It puts you in a different pay category and a different ability to make you susceptible to lawsuits, for which they'd get massive lawsuits that would help correct the problem. So why do you think they want that status or why do you think they have that status of not editorializing things and having a special status with the government it was something that happened in the i don't know if it was in the late 90s or early 2000s again i'm, I'm sorry for just uh, for arguing something i'm really just vague on i only know that it's there i only know that they're fighting it and, it and that it got removed in the uk sure so the i mean i can probably tell you the reason why the, the reason uh, is you wouldn't want sites like these to be held accountable for what's being posted on them because then sites like these could never exist right because people for instance if i see a post i don't like on facebook this is similar to kind of like it almost sounds to me like a, a like a journalistic safe harbor law like the reason why you can't sue youtube for hosting um copyrighted content is because youtube right. makes a good faith effort to take it down right and then the that's same, right and youtube's another one that wants the law to stay the same sure and i would argue that this is probably a positive law like we we, we wouldn't want to be able to sue because if you were able to sue social media sites for things posted on social media sites then they yes. wouldn't exist right it's kind of like That's, when hillary says we should be able to sue the manufacturers of firearms for murders well that means nobody would sell any more guns right we would eventually be right. banning guns right so um but steven it's because of this preferred status that these particular mm -hmm. businesses can push competitors out so now they're making an argument for monopoly. That well, wait, it monopoly. sounds like anybody that creates a social media site would probably get this status with the government. They don't because they fell under this status early on in the history of the Internet. So you're telling early me right on. now there are conservative social media sites like Gab or whatever that can be sued for yeah. content hosted directly on the site? It's Gab not content. Well, they could be, but that's not why they got out. They got out because these other preferred companies grew artificially big because of their protection. So not only do new, do newcomers not get the protect, uh, get the protection, but they just can't compete because of the advantage given to Google, Facebook, and Twitter. I, I think would, you'd be on board with this if you if you if you if I you know I'll have to point you to a I'll yeah I would have to, to say because I don't I, I just I've never heard of this happening in my entire life the idea that like a new social media startup happened and then they were sued out of existence for things that other people were posting on their site like yeah. I just don't not, think this not happens. not sued out of existence they're they're pushed out of existence because Google gets preferential treatment on servers. Well, whoa, whoa, so wait, so, wait, 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 hold on, wait. What do you mean by preferential treatment on servers? It's, it 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 is all the way down to the server network level across America 
that is able to strong arm uh, and give more power to Google, Facebook, Twitter that keeps other competitors from being able to compete at the same time because they have side deals with them. That's all. I'm, I, I know I'm being sl- very yeah, sloppy. I, I, I'd have to look into this because this doesn't sound just, possible. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm to, pretty sure this is not true, but go ahead. Yeah. Just to clarify what Doug's talking about, I, I looked it up. It's Section 230 of the Thank Communications you. Decency Act mm-hmm. Thank that you. shields internet companies for the content that people put on their platforms. Which yeah. sounds like a very but, positive thing. That sounds like it should definitely be a thing. Yeah. Uh, that it, it would be true until they believe that negative plat- negative things that ought to get you deplatformed and keep me from being able to make a living is because I say there's two genders. No, 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 no. This, okay. So the that's why, why that's why oh, no, no, no. I lost. That's yeah. why I lost my account, Stephen. Sure. Is because, because I said there were two two genders. Yeah, but basically, what this law does is it makes it so that these sites can exist. If this law if this law didn't exist, then these companies would yeah. be relentlessly sued out of existence. However, yeah. just because they enjoy this protection that makes them not suable because of what other people post on their site doesn't mean that we get to take a step further and say, well, now you have to host everything on your website. If somebody posts child porn on Twitter, you have to host it because you're not allowed to deplatform anything yeah. now, right? No, that, I, I don't think that these two things are mutually exclusive. These can exist side by side where a company should be able to decide yeah. I want to host this content or I don't but also um, I don't want to be held liable in a legal sense by things that people post on my website if I if, if my, I were to go on and post that right, what intended to be good they have abused and you know that's possible for them to abuse that thing and they are abusing it what, if, abusing it in what way uh, deplatforming Milo Yiannopoulos, deplatforming. I don't think it's uh, an abuse to say. Gavin I don't think McGinnis. you should be allowed to tell somebody that they have to host somebody else's content. That's anti-free speech. I know, but no, but they're doing it, Stephen, in the name of you can't sue us, or we should be able to to decide if kitty porn is going to be put on our site or not, and they use it to Wait, so uh, to turn somebody, off Prager University conservative videos. So they somebody, do not turn off videos from the left. They turn them off from the right only. Sure, if somebody if somebody bans you from their platform, should you be allowed to sue them for that? Do you have a do you think you have a right? You are entitled to somebody else's private property? No, no, no. Well, that's no, what, that's the argument of, you're making. Because of section 230 though. I I want them to give me the right. Section 230 doesn't give that the, Section 230 treatment. isn't a command that they have to host every single content. It's just a special yeah. legal protection that makes so they're not liable. I, I mean, like, I imagine that this is probably similar for things like restaurants. If I go inside of a restaurant and I stand on a table and I scream, you know, like, I hate all black people, like, get them out of here. That doesn't mean that somebody can sue the restaurant and say, hey, um, Applebee's, um, I'm going to yeah. sue you because of what that guy was saying in the restaurant. That's a, they, they probably are protected from that in a, in a litigation sense. However, yeah. Applebee's, while being protected from that, could still kick me out of the restaurant. I can't say to Applebee's, well, hold on, you can't get sued, so now you have to allow me to stand in your restaurant yeah. and scream at everybody else that I hate black people. These two things aren't mutually exclusive at all, I don't think. They're not, but Stephen, I just want to say that earlier on when we were at the base of this argument of liberalism, you said you were more for freedom. Yeah. And, and what you're doing is you're defending a giant, powerful corporation, which sounds more Republican to me, and I'm defending the freedom of speech of more people, not child molesters and people yelling, uh, I hate all black people, but people like normal conservative sites, you know, like Prager University or me saying there's two genders. Sure, Who's so, more, who, who really values freedom more? I mean, like you? we can get in, well, we can get into this discussion. So the, the awkward part for me is, so I said earlier, I described myself as a progressive. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to trap you. The sounds tricky. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, a, no, I'm I, an ardent capitalist. I'm a very big supporter of capitalism. We're there, um, we're there together too on that. Well, kind of, but it sounds like you want to socialize social media companies. You want to take Twitter and you want to make it like a, like a public utility or Facebook and turn it into a public utility. Yeah, I, and I, I actually don't. And, and that's another thing is this is also. But that's, those are the arguments you're making though. They're not only, they're not the, I'm only saying it has to be fair, like pick one, pick a lane. Cause right now they're double dipping on both sides and the same would go. It's like, if you chose to make it a utility or not a utility, then it would, you force fairness. And I'm only saying in a free market system, it ought to be wide open free Okay, is, I think, is more what I yeah, would, I, to. and I would not, I don't believe the state should go in and start forcing businesses to be fair, but that, that would also mean that say a restaurant should also have the right if they choose to not hire a gay man. So, I, I, well, oh, wait, wait, that's uh, a totally you, different. I, I'm only well, saying. We're going to get to that later. Sure. I think, we're, I think we're, 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 just, we're mismatching right now because you yeah. think it's a double dip, but I don't agree. So let's just focus on this okay. razor focus issue. So here is my statement and tell me where you take issue with this, okay? Sure. I think that we shouldn't be allowed to sue companies because of content that other people host on their site. So okay. do you think, are you okay with that statement? 
So if somebody posts yes. something very yes. bad, yeah. yes, I so agree. if you own a social media site, I shouldn't be able to sue you for things that other people post on your site. And totally I also agree. think that you, as somebody that owns the servers and owns a site, you should be allowed to ban um, anybody that you want to, assuming you don't violate any federal laws. Like we're not banning like things that are protected classes in the United States, for instance. I think that that should be okay. Yeah. Well, I'm for removing the protected class status, but yeah. Wait, you're for removing all protected classes? I'm for removing all protective class statuses. Okay. Are you okay with, let's so, say- So, you know I mean? When, if you break one thing, mm -hmm. I'm saying you break everything down the chain. So, it's very hard to agree with a hypothetical that's way downstream. Sure, that's fine. No, no, we're focused thing. on a very, very, very narrow issue now. So, if yeah. you disagree- Because, because, sure. because, because Stephen, because I know how these protected classes are used. Twitter's policy is- we particularly protect protected classes. And so when you say there's only two genders, it can harm a, um, well, a trans on, can person. I, can I kind of not, not, not really. Whether or not yes, Twitter, well. Steven, that's what, that's the letter they wrote well, no, me. No, 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 yeah, yeah, but, but you got to be very, very, very careful. There is nothing in federal law that mandates that Twitter, like, deplatform hate oh, speech. That, right, that's not right, a federal no, law. Yeah, so right, we're, I'm, I'm being very careful with the law, the yeah. legal side of things right now, okay? So I'm only showing where they're abusing their status. You know, so I understand. So, okay, so the, you said earlier, so you said that you are okay with making it so that a private company, um, can, can not be sued for things that other users post on that site, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you also okay then with that company being able to ban anybody that they want to be able to ban? Yes. Okay. All, yes. Then but, where's our disagreement? All, but, but all the way up. What all do you mean way all the way up? I'm, I'm really, I'm for a libertarian freedom to allow businesses do whatever they want to do, including put as much smoke in the air as they want. And not use you know inorganic inorganic compounds in their uh, in their foods and things like that. And you let the market decide, because I always believe the market is going to be fairer than the government, which picks sides and can be bought off and all that sure. stuff. You if can't that, buy off the market. If that's true, then why is Gab still so much smaller than Twitter? Uh, because we, we you haven't even you haven't seen it uh, you haven't seen it tried in a free environment. What what environment is not free? Gab has all the same protections that Twitter has. It does it does not it hands down does not and I, again I'm I'm talking way outside of my league here and I have okay, to sure, go into sure. okay, yeah, yeah. I don't want to debate stuff that I don't really know about anyway. That's fine. Okay, but, we can but, but I'm, that. I'm only saying that I've read enough of the of the downstream arguments to know that I'm I'm convinced that it is unfair and that it's cooked in the books all the way up and I personally have it demonstrated to me by Twitter their idea of stopping hate speech uh, and their idea of hate speech is when I say there's two genders and then the people who are uh, liberals say, um, Jesus, uh, you know, went down on me and F your religion and F you. And I, and I hope your church burns to the ground. They can say all that stuff. And I report them to Twitter and they don't get, well, that they don't, they that's, they that's, don't get what, their no, Twitter no, no, That's not true. Actually, if you discriminate against, I, okay, I could be wrong. We'd have to go into Twitter in terms of service. I'm, hate I'm speech. not a protected, even conservative evangelicals are not a protected group. Well, no, no, so conser I, I don't think, cons I don't think conservatives are because political opinions I don't believe are, but I think, re I think religious categories, um, are, um, we prohibit targeting individuals with content intended to cite fear or, fear or spread fearful stereotypes about a protected category, including asserting that members of protected category are most. Yeah. Uh, for example, yeah. all religious groups are terrorists. Okay, hateful imagery um, based on their race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, gender yeah. identity, or ethnic. Yeah. So religion should yeah. be a protected category under Twitter. So it, people, it should be, but it's not. And they're, it, and they're, it and is. And I, I'm, no, it's because all of their most of their employees. Probably more I have employees. literally, oh. I have literally, tw I have literally like typed on Facebook. It's a different platform that I hate yeah. Christians in the U.S. And I have gotten a three-day suspension from Facebook. So I know that these are protected well, classes. Well, I know what happens on the only these. evangelical working for Facebook in Silicon Valley because most of their employees that they're pulling from tend to go liberal. James O'Keefe, the journalist, has recorded two employees of Twitter saying, well, that, anytime they see someone promoting Trump. They deplatformed him. He has them on camera saying it. These are ex employees of Twitter. I'm only saying that in general. So well, I yeah, see we would have to. We, yeah, it, I, it could be confirmation bias. Yeah, so I don't. Especially because James O'Keefe, every single thing he, project he has been involved in has never turned out to any have any legitimacy whatsoever. Every single big thing he's been in has been completely fabricated. Um, we can walk down the list of all of his investigations. I disagree. 
Well, I think almost everything he said is true. Almost every everything he said about Planned Parenthood was incorrect. Everything he said about Acorn well, was it's incorrect. It's not true. It was they. He caught them on video he, saying he, they they were they wanted to sell baby parts. It was absolutely taken out of context. It had to do with covering like the transportation fee of something, and he made it out to sound like they were harvesting baby organs. It was they absolutely were harvesting untrue. baby organs. It, they were looking for the transportation cost. Okay, I, I don't want to. Okay, I, let's. We won't. We won't derail into into James O'Keefe. Yeah. Um, that's so. I'm sorry. The, so coming all the way back then, I, I'm still not entirely sure what your position is on. Uh, okay, so I think you want to make it so that so companies should be allowed to remove whoever they want, um, and they should also not be sued. But then you also think that if that's going to happen, we should remove protected classes altogether in the United States. Is that uh, if they're going to use those protected classes? to come up with an excuse for what they're going to start to monitor on their site, then yeah, I don't believe in, I don't think okay. they should. So let's move in that direction a little bit because I'm curious. If I have a, if I have a, let's say that I open a building, I'm a, a building owner and I want to rent it, or let's say that yeah. I own a job, I own a job, um, I own a firm yeah. and I want to hire employees. Should I be allowed to say I am not going to hire people that are black or gay? Should I have that right to do that? Um, if it's fair, yes. If what it's do you mean not, by if, fair? I'll go with yes or no. For instance, can a university say I will not hire a biologist who's a creationist? So, so you're yeah, yes or no. Religion's protected. Should a university have to hire a microbiologist who who, who they don't want to hire because he's a creationist? So that's I, that's that's the opposite of the gay black uh, preferred status. I, we're not preferred statuses. So I'm only saying should they have to hire them? Yeah, so I, I would I would say here no, but not because of their of, religion, of course but because you don't. well, no, 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 because we're having disagreements on matters of fact. So, for instance, let's say um, I no, was no, going to no, no, no. It, it is a fact that that's their religion, and it is a fact that religion is a protected class, and sure. it's a fact well, well, that it is not defended in the in the court. So we're kind of going like, but, pr well, well, hold on, I have to finish this here because this is really not good. Okay. We're, we're in a principles of explosion area. Um, if I were to yeah. grant you that, then I would have to say that I literally should be able to hire any single person ever. So, for instance, let's say that I want to hire a person that works at a restaurant, but they have a religion that says that they should be allowed to jerk off in every single plate they serve to a customer. And I say, right. well, hold on. Right. I'm not going to hire the jerk off Sterarian because that's his religion, right? You say, well, you're discriminating <laughs> against religion. No, I don't, right. I don't buy that. I don't think that's legitimate. Right. So if I'm going to hire a professor of biology that disagrees with all of the mainstay academic biology, I don't think that that's discriminating against his religion. I, if your religion demands that you disagree with with all of, yeah. of scientific yeah. academia, then I mean, that's I mean that's, that's not a matter of like discriminating but, against religious belief. It's a, it's a, it, it, no, it is discrimination. I think literally I just discrimination religion. against religious belief. I'm sorry. Sorry. Again, Doug? It, it is literally discrimination against a religious belief. Then, then, so then, do you argue that, uh, like, you're, you're only saying you're only saying it's justified to discriminate against him? I'm, I'm saying it's justified to discriminate certain ideas, of course. Yeah. Well, which I think you we, let me know if you're for discrimination or not, because you're either for discrimination or not. You're well, either going to hire the jack off, wait, wait, can jack off in everyone's in everyone's Well, we discriminate too. all the time, of course. I would yeah. discriminate or, or, against an employee that, for instance, was very rude or vulgar. I would discriminate against an employee that was physically abusive towards other people. Yeah, we yeah. discriminate all the time. What we're asking about here in the United States is whether or not we should be able to discriminate against specific classes of people, right? Like discrimination in and of itself is something we discriminate against plates of food based on what we want to eat, right? So we're right. talking about discriminating against classes of people. In the United States, we've decided that for social reasons and for legal reasons, we shouldn't be allowed to discriminate against classes of people, um, especially things that are either like very protected or things that we can't change. So like our race or ethnicity or things like veteran status or family status. Uh, re right? Religion's in there also. Yes, right things like religion well. is sure. constitutional. Correct, so I'm only correct. saying I agree. I agree. It, it, it fits under that category, and yet sure. it is absolutely not protected. Everyone knows it's not, and sure. everyone acts like well, it's not. But 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 when that when that the thing is is that like our belief in the United States is that your race or your being a veteran or your family status shouldn't impede you from doing any type of work that anyone else could. But if your religious doctrine calls for something that is directly contra um, contradictory to whatever your job is supposed to be, then it's not really dis right. it's not really discriminatory against religion that's that's kind of a it, it is discrimination against religion I'm, I'm only saying you're saying it's justified but it is discrimination against someone's religion okay i i mean i th i really think this take is really absurd i, I don't know how to i don't know how to proceed um, because i, I'm, I feel I, like at I, this point I'm, I looking, could... I'm not looking for something mm -hmm. i prefer anything i'm only saying let's go with the principle and you have to follow that principle to its logical end you can't just abandon it when you don't like it well, anymore. I don't, I don't when, agree with that. I don't think that principle, I don't think you're going to a logical yeah. end. I think you're driving it off a cliff that I, I would I would avoid, right? If you believe in any certain thing, that's fine. But if your religious yeah. practice is going to cause you to do something negative to the job, so for instance, like I don't think I should be able to discriminate against a Muslim, but if you 
want to stop and pray, you know, 25 fucking times in the middle of a shift, well, no, you're going to get fired. Um, now, I know yeah. that the now there are court battles regarding, like, specifically, like, disordering yes. a hijab, the blah, blah, blah. And those, yes, are, those, can are. Be, those can be fun in the courts, and, and maybe there are some wiggle room there. But for the most part, for me, and, and I would fall very strict on the side of this, I don't think that any religious behavior, right, is excusable on, on the job insofar as it, like, just, it ruins your ability to do the job, which is probably what most people end up debating about, right? Like, right. for instance, if you're a server, right. you should probably be allowed to wear a hijab right. or a fucking yarmulke or whatever religious garment. So, so if a man who identifies as a woman wears a dress, has to wear a dress to a conservative restaurant in Kentucky and it causes them to lose business, it would be justifiable to say, look, you're ruining this business and we have to let you go because you wear a dress. Um, well, right now, I don't believe that transgender people or that trans people are protected, are a protected class in the United States. So, uh, you, I, I, in well, New York the, City, they are, I believe. That's they, been passed there. I guarantee you they will be at the constitutional well, level. We could only be so lucky, maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> for, that's yeah. my world that I'm pushing well, for. Well, again, if, um, it's, if it's fair, if it's fair and, mm -hmm. and it equally applies to both sides, no matter who's uncomfortable and who's insulted, I'm fine with it. I don't care which sure. way we go. I'm only saying I mean, you either protect everyone or you protect no one. Yeah. And I mean, like, depending on the type of job, I mean, like, I think I'm probably okay with things. Like, so have you ever been in a casino before? I don't know if that's a good. Yeah. So, yeah okay. So, like, for, um, I, I mean, it sounds really rude but i'm sure that there are probably beauty standards that they have for like the cocktail servers yeah i'm um, like oh, yeah. this is probably you know like a, an acceptable thing um in, in terms of like having certain types of women that look certain ways or whatever um but but i don't think that just because um like sent refocusing back on the religion thing um i don't think it's okay to fire somebody just because of their religious doctrine so if you want to be a christian biologist sure. that's fine but if sure. your religious practice makes you directly contradict the job then that's a sure. problem. So for instance, sure. I should be able to hire a Muslim in any job, but if you want to be a Muslim firefighter and when you want to go into a building, you sure. don't wear your helmet, but you wear a hijab, now nah, you're, you're out of there. Sure. Dude, you can't do that. You're going to sure. die, right? Or That's, that's reasonable. That's yeah. reasonable. These are, these are reasonable examples. Sure. And the problem is well, with the way the law is, a whole lot of unreasonable examples well, come no, up. This, I mean, like, it's people it's act more like, abused because people have confirmation bias. You know this. Well, no, no. People act like this, this idea that like people skirt the lines of the law all the time, but that's not really how it works. In practice, there's a judge that looks at things and, and usually there's like a good faith effort and there's like an established established um i can't remember the word but there's like a, there's an established like law a pre there's precedent there's legal precedent set up for what you can do or what you can't do um, yeah. you know people try to be cute with the law like well actually officer i wasn't speeding and by i can prove that your device doesn't work like judges will laugh at you and throw that shit out of court right or you'll go to court and you'll just be sure, sure. Guilty, right? sure. um sure. Th this idea that like um going back to the very very original example that you gave if you want to be a biologist and you want to be christian and you want to be a professor that's totally great but as soon as your religious doctrine causes you to take on a behavior that is divergent from what your job demands, which is teaching the course material or teaching the scientific consensus, then we have a right. problem. I have no problem right. with the biologist that's religious, but if they want to teach creationism, well, now we have a problem because now your religious behavior is impacting your ability to perform sure. your job. Sure, sure. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean— Okay. It's not a hill. It's not a hill I'm going to die on, Stephen. Cool. But. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I want to back up even a little bit further because this is the original sure. reason why I got triggered at the uh, conservatives want to keep the internet open is because conservatives are the party that are pushing the hardest against things like net neutrality. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely against net neutrality. So why are you absolutely against net neutrality? Against because I because I don't trust the government to get involved with the internet. I think it's I think it'd be psycho to bring them involved unless you want to submit all of the internet to Trump and his cabinet and a and a Republican Congress and a Republican Supreme Court. Is that your dream? Well, so right now we already have examples of high tier ISPs um, yeah. giving preferential bandwidth or treatment to private companies. We already yeah. have this example on the books, right? Companies yeah. have already sued them for doing this. Yeah. So if we don't have, because these companies essentially exist as, as which, which I'm for because it's more of a free market, but, but, well, you know, but it's not, it's a market failure, right? These are geographic monopolies. We don't really have choices between ISPs and we really don't have choices between routing. Um, no, I think, I think the real, but the, the existence of a choice, I'm only saying I, I do want more choices. I just wish the free market would figure it out. I don't want, I don't trust the government to figure it out. I know as soon as the government gets involved, what's going to happen. And I don't trust, especially liberal governments. I, well, I've seen what they do with their ideology. They push it on others. They fire my people. They deplatform my people. I don't want them anywhere near the government. So, I mean, this happens in private companies all the time The, as the well. same reason why we want separation of church from in state is why we want separation of government from business. Well, I don't, no, no, not, not entirely. Or government from culture. Don't well, touch it. Limited government, bro. That's well, why I'm a conservative. Sure, but you, so, do you understand, or did somebody, well, hold, well, hold on, I have to do this, the net neutrality thing. Okay. Do you, do you acknowledge okay, that sometimes the market can't effectively deliver a solution to something, that a market failure can exist, that make it, yes. makes it a free market, right? 
So yes. wouldn't you say that in the case of an ISP where there is a, so here are things that could cause micro a tremendous barrier to entry, right? It is a massive, yeah. a monumental undertaking for infrastructure yeah. and massive. Yeah. Like, like Twitter, like Twitter and Facebook is the cable system uh, having a massive barrier to entry. Just no. for just by its sheer size, it's hard. Sure. Okay. I mean, we can make and arguments about in their establishment. It's near impossible. Sure. Uh, hey, people make the same arguments about the big banks. So maybe you're in favor yeah. of socializing yeah. those as well. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, backing up. Um, I, I, so backing up to ISPs, people would argue that well, you 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 know, if you deregulate everything related to ISPs, which they largely are, we don't really have any free market stuff going on there. It, nobody's going to stop in and compete with AT and T. You know, and and ironically, the only examples of this successfully happening are usually when city governments step in to, to do it by pulling all of their citizens' money together in order yeah. to do it. Uh, I, I, I would rather live in almost any form of non-internet brokenness than have the state be part of the solution. I just so you would rather live in a world where you can't access, say, any religious yes. websites because it costs yes. you an extra than have the government fix? Okay. Than have the government do it. That's how strongly I believe in it. What is your core like? What I'm just curious from a moral point it's, of view. It's free market. Free market. No, well, that's uh, that's not core. Free market. Why? What? Why do you? Why do you like free oh. markets? I like free markets as well. So I'll tell you why yeah. after you tell me why. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I like free markets because I think it's actually a great truth indicator. The market's allowed to do what it is intended to do when you're allowed to freely buy or freely sell whatever you want, the, the market starts to decide more. Instead of forcing people to do what is moral with their money, which is always someone else, right? You have to create something bigger than business to force business to do what you believe is moral is kind of the problem. So I go, what, and this goes back to the founders, is I distrust that bigger thing than business, that it's gonna be better, because I believe you've just created something that now not only has its own corrupt power of government, but it also has the corrupt power of business buckled under it. You've multiplied the misery of what business can do by the government. I just have a basic distrust of government. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a, it's a very American thing. I, I don't I know why Americans. Pay. I under, I don't know why you have such a distrust of government, but you don't have a distrust of private businesses. That's the one thing I've never understood. No, about I, no, I distrust private. Hey, private businesses would sell their own mom down the road if they could. The only difference but, is we can hold government accountable with our vote, but you can't hold a, a business accountable. But you're because but do the government come on? Why do you? I, I'm sorry. Why do you think that government would do the right thing regarding business when the people who run the government are made of the exact same human beings with the exact same nature and makeup as the people who run business? You're literally taking people out of business and putting them in a structure that is above business with more power. Especially with how much how much the lobbyists pay off politicians. I mean, we can have a separate conversation about lobbying because I don't think lobbying is good either. Yeah. But but fundamentally, but, but do you at the agree end of the day, that that, that well, philosophically, no, I I, no, philosophically, you don't I trust totally business. Disagree. Well, and this is right. like this is the difference is what I don't yeah. understand. Maybe because of my very limited time working for a large company, people always talk. People always say this stuff like, "Well, the government is bureaucratic. The government is bloated. The government is slow. Yeah. The government is lazy." This is one hundred percent true of every large business. Like, go ask a friend that works in IT for for any huge business, like. Like, they're never going to tell you, oh, yeah, our private enterprise is very swift. You know, our tickets come through very smoothly. Everybody on the job knows exactly. No, there's tons of bloated, horrible waste in every private business of people that will max out their budget at the end of the year so that they can get the same allotment for the next year, of people that hire shitty employees, of people that hire friends and family. Right? Private business yeah. does this just as much as the government does. The only difference is for government, we can vote them out if we don't like them, right? And that's why we have somebody even as crazy as Trump right now at, at the head of the government. That would never happen in a private business, mm -hmm. right? Because in a private business, you know, it's always people that the CEO knows or yeah. friends of the CEO or whoever the board decides or whatever, right? It goes much differently. So at the end of the day, like business and government can all have like the same problems, but at the end of the day, yeah. at the very least, we can hold government accountable. That being said, I am a free market guy. I don't like it. I don't like government being involved where it doesn't have to be, but it seems like you don't recognize areas where we really do need the government to be involved. Like, would you recognize like a monopoly is something that the government should step in and break up? Or do you yeah, think monopoly I'm, should be allowed to exist because those pop up in the free market? I'm very reluctant to pull the trigger on monopolies, but yeah, I do believe they have to be broken up. Okay. So then why don't ISPs count as monopolies to you? If they were strictly a utility and and something that we deem as a kind of right for all citizens, which gets weird, then yeah, you make the defense that this is like having access to an electric company. You know, you can't, you turn someone's power off, you're going to kill them. You turn the internet off and they're probably a lot happier anyways.
Okay. Um, I mean, backing Doug? up, I guess I asked you real quick to justify your core value. So I like free markets because I yeah. believe my core, honestly, I don't care about free markets intrinsically, right? My yeah. core value is I want to deliver the most amount of opportunity and freedom and choice to as many people as possible. Personally, I believe that free markets do that better than, um, better than say like a planned economy, like a socialist or a communist yeah. economy. I agree. That's I agree. my personal belief. However, you have to recognize that fundamentally there are some things that free markets do not solve. Internet, geographic, monopolies, things that require massive infrastructure costs, probably one of them. Sure. Things like healthcare, probably one of them. These sure. are things where at the end of the day, whether it's a free market or not, I don't really care. I just want to deliver the most amount of goods and services to the most amount of people as possible. And I if, believe, if I, I believe you, will, in, you will limit that service if it gets buckled under under government. I believe well, you will no, do no, more you to limit that service than expand it. But you so your principle that. that you're saying that you want no, no, more no, you, you access by more people. You disagreed with that earlier because earlier I offered you a situation where with government regulation, say net neutrality, we could deliver yeah. more freer internet to more people. And you said, well, I don't care. I'd rather not have the internet at all. So you seem to have I, a I, well, higher I, value. No, I, no, I still would rather not have any inter internet at all than have the internet under the government because I believe you'd have less access under the government. Even though More right people, now we can demonstrate would, that people it, violate like net look, neutrality if, principles. Because I just think, uh, I think if you put the government under Nancy Pelosi and, uh, and, uh, 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 or Cortez or whatever her name is, uh, I believe they would, uh, not give internet access to Trump, uh, to, uh, Rush Limbaugh for hate speech. Okay, so they if wouldn't. you believe that earlier in this debate you said that the that the republic is strong, that our foundations are good, and yeah. then in four years Trump is going to be out of office, he's not going to run for a third term, but somehow you think that like a random um, congressperson from New York is going to take away the, the ability for people to get on the internet? Like how? Oh no, I I know they will because that's those are the liberals that work for Twitter. They'll just go up a level, and I won't be able to have any recourse because it's the government doing it instead of a business. Wait, it, so, it doesn't so, solve anything by putting this evil corporation that you hate under Trump, better or worse. Well, I don't think that they're under Trump, right? We have like institutions of U.S. government. Like the president isn't a dictator yet. It doesn't under, oversee. Under Trump, Mitch McConnell and, uh, and Alito, the Supreme Court justice, that's where you want to put all business under them. You trust more than Silicon Valley right now. Well, at the end of the day, I, we can vote them out if we don't like what they're doing. We have no oversight really into things like Facebook or Amazon, right? Yeah. Like that's their, they do whatever the board is. Really. At the end of the day, their goal is to maximize profit for shareholders. At the end of the day, every business in a capitalist society, their yeah. goal is to maximize profit for shareholders. Whether or not that runs against the, the, our interests as American citizens is they couldn't care less, unless they're all like moral upstanding citizens. I'm still, I'm still hope, I just, I'm still counting, I'd rather count on a free market solution. Okay, well, I mean, you I know, think after this point, Facebook, the free market Facebook will fade and fall. Facebook will fade and fall. As soon as you put it under the government and it's a government Facebook, it just became a lifer. It will be there forever, no matter how inefficient it is. They'll just keep funding it and keep it alive and really push out competition because now they've got the government dollar dollars instead of the free market. When it's a utility and an institution that has to be protected and provided to all citizens, you've just turned uh, you've just turned our Internet into what they did to health care. Well, hold on. Healthcare was never socialized. It's always been privatized, and it's the worst in the United States. It's absolutely horrible. Yeah, you're you're fighting for putting it under, but it's not the worst in the world. Well, it's the, not. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it's the worst in the world, but it's abysmal compared to other first world countries. I disagree. I think it's better than them. Way better. How? For instance, with the privatization of medicine, uh, American uh, leads wait, the wait, number. Wait, I'm sorry. Of... Hold on. Wait, wait, real quick before we get off into this, because we're about to jump into yeah. a totally different topic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, um, get, get well, off healthcare. Go back to the, look, the yeah, internet. So like utilities. Listen, about, I mean, like even, the internet's boring, and so is healthcare. So let's get onto something else. Well, well we are going to move on to something else. <laughs> okay, I, sorry. I, yeah, go. I, I want Steven. Wait, well, yeah, like my Steven, final. I, I, my, Steven, I'm bored, and I'm bored, and I'm out of my league. So well, that's okay. My, my final point, I guess, on utilities, I mean, like, the, the government does provide things like utilities to the United States, and for the most part, it works pretty well. Like, most people have running water and electricity and gas and power, and we seem to be able to provide that, and that's all social, or socialized, is ran by governments and whatnot, not privatized in the U.S. Um, I, bringing up healthcare is bizarre to me because we pay so much, and our outcomes just aren't competitive with the rest of the world for how much we pay for it. Um, so I, it seems like healthcare doesn't seem to work as a private means, and we definitely yeah. haven't socialized it. Um, the the oh, Obamacare, or more accurately, the Affordable Care Act didn't do anything to provide any sort of social health care options. Medicare wasn't really expanded, or Medicaid wasn't really expanded that much, and, and you know, and all the private companies still exist. But yeah, sorry, okay, we, that's our, our, our private industry has has come up with a hundred times more medical patents and cures and breakthroughs than any other first world country, 
And it's because ours is driven by a free profit market, market with big pharma. I mean, we also there, invented there things like good. the internet via the government that didn't come from the private sector. Sure. We've also, we, there, there well, was a ton, but like, it was greatly expanded. On the, I mean, look, when it was the internet and the government, it was like, it was two computers running through a phone wire. It was, uh, it was AOL that made the internet what it is today. As uh, far as I mean, that, that whole or DARPA, prodigy. Ooh, I, d- I totally disagree with that, but I'm, right. not, I'm a little out of my, that, that, that I, whole, I'm out of my like, league. Dude, okay. Don't even bother. I'm out of my league. Yeah. <laughs> okay. just, just, yeah, okay. just pray so, that Tesla puts up a satellite and creates a wireless system that competes with our current cable company and it'll all be moot. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead for the. <laughs> Quick reminder to everyone. If you're watching right now, please like the stream and share it on social media. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, and if you send in Streamlabs, since the last time I read them, I'll be reading them at the end of the at the end of the show. So feel free to send them away. Doug, uh, one thing, one of the first things I heard about you before I met you was that you were against the legalization of gay marriage. Is that oh, correct? Oh, 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 that is true. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, so do you have reasons beyond just your religious beliefs for that? Yeah, not at all. Yeah, my my religious beliefs they play into a little bit, but um. It's it, it it is as foundational as my religion. I'll put it that way. My philosophy. And do you see? I mean, would you say that that kind of contradicts, like a libertarian point of view, though? Um, no, because no, I I don't I don't. Um, and I'm not a libertarian. Uh, okay. that, that could be one of the reasons. Is um, I actually believe in a republic. That, that you know, you have to. Uh, that's a long story, but. Um, do you want me to go into the gay marriage thing? Is that what you want me to yeah, do? Yeah, I'd like you to go into it without using just "I believe in this religion" and that's why I'm against it. Actually, yeah, I, ne- I, ne- I would I never say that about anything, anyway. Sure. Because either the religion, either the religion corresponds to truth. This is a weird thing. It's either tied to truth, or it is false and must be abandoned. So, so it's it it ought to co- it ought to cohere with a whole lot of things that are true. For instance, science and history and archaeology and philosophy and things like that. So I actually do believe there's other indicators that the religion is true. You can't just say, look, I've got this book, this magic book, and that's I'm blind and I'm done. That's actually what I believe false religions do. So So, what is it about gay marriage that is harmful? I I I don't know if I could say it's I, I do believe it's harmful to the individual, but let's that that's more homosexuality, whether if you're married or not. I would, but specifically for marriage, so putting, you, you have to remove the idea of is homosexuality right or wrong? So set that aside because my, my arguments kind of apply, impl, you know, apply whether if I could make the same argument, say against uh, polygamy, right? Whether if it's right or wrong, I'd make similar arguments against polygamy. Um, I believe First of all, I don't believe you could, you're allowed. This is a uh, against. Uh, this is something more that I would say against libertarians. I don't believe anyone is allowed to, by caveat, change the definition of a word and face and force everyone else to accept that definition of a word. So the definition of the word marriage is to marry the two sexes. It may be multiple multiple people. Uh, in the tradition of America, it is one and one. One man and one woman is marriage. Uh, you cannot have gay marriage any more than you can have a square circle. It breaks the definition of marriage. Either the two men break the definition or it breaks the definition of marriage. Marriage, you marry the two sexes is number one. So, but, and by the way, I, I have an even bigger caveat, which all of this falls under, okay? Once we allowed marriage to mean not a lifelong commitment, but with no fault divorce where you can just get out of it anytime you want. And we will recognize that you already broke the definition of marriage to a point that almost doesn't mean anything anymore. So even this little ground of no, uh, gays can't marriage. The argument was lost as far as devaluing and destroying what the word marriage was. As soon as you allowed two people to enter into it and just get out of it, if they don't like each other. Okay, Starting to can, sound like a Catholic there, Doug. Can I, can I, okay, hold on. There's a lot of problems here. So to, to marry two sexes is to put two people together for to, a man and a woman together for life is the definition of marriage. 
Okay, so firstly, may, let's... Maybe no one does it, but I'm only saying that's what it means. Well, let's look at descriptive versus prescriptive language real quick. Okay, so do you believe that language is a property of the world, a property of the universe, or do you think that language is invented by humans? Both. So if it all is, well, just people... Because, just because it's invented by humans doesn't mean that words aren't pointers to true things. Okay, uh, sure. Words can, be, words right? can represent underlying physical things sure yeah. however and the, it's the words... physical things that, that i'm arguing for not the well no the, necessarily you're... the word that you call it well no you're arguing for the word right now you're saying that we can't redefine the word of marriage when we absolutely can we can literally make marriage mean whatever we want it to mean oh yeah you can no no doubt no doubt you you could do that but you could also say i mean if you're going to go that arbitrary you could say, um, uh, I am married to the entire United States right now. My definition of marriage is is me being a sure. citizen of the United well, States, and I'm now married well, to everybody. Sure. Okay, that's it's a really bad example that you use because you actually you can be you can be you can be married to an idea. That's actually a proper you'd be using English yeah. properly, but I'll ignore the yeah. fact that that would be a valid example. Um, and I will instead ask you. Where does my, my point is my point on that on using that Stephen wasn't to be cute It's to say you can redefine a word to a point that you break the word and it's useless Sure, and which so is what I, I believe gay marriage does. Yeah, and what because, I'm gonna ask you is why do we have the definitions for words that we have? Where do these definitions come from or why do you think we define? I'm not looking for like a 100% academic answer I'm just curious yeah. for what you think like why do we have the words that we do like what do they do for us? I think they help us communicate truth to each other and words are only as good as where they correspond to truth. But you know, what is the wor truth? words, do, the words is do change their definitions over time, but I, but why I'm do saying, definitions change? Why do definitions change? Yeah. I mean, give me an example besides gay marriage. And the I'll, word and I'll tell gay. You. How about the word gay? Uh, That's besides totally besides anything to do with homosexuality. Um, I what mean, a, stupid, a, moron, and idiot used to be words that referred to, like distinctly yeah. to certain IQ groups, yeah. and now we use them generally. I mean, I'm go. sure there's like a million there words you. that have changed. There um, you go. Sure. There you go. I, I would argue that in that, in that case, those words, and I, I think most word experts would agree that over time, our words are losing their meaning to objective, uh, to po be pointers to objective truth. That is, we're getting much sloppier with language. And our and our words that we use have far more multiple meanings when they used to have more specific ones. No, back in, say, absolutely the, not. I the promise first you that is not the case. That I promise right. you that is not the case. The idea I, that I promise you, I promise you, it is. <laughs> I would, I would be astounded if any linguistic expert were to come on here and say, "Well, words used to point to objective truth." I, and I, I don't appeal to experts. I only, I only want, I want examples. Well, like the first of all, the entire idea of a, mar a marriage is not something. A marriage is not a property of the world. A marriage is a, a concept of two different people coming together. So we're already off. No, no, no. It's no. You just you just made up two different people. You can't have the word. Well, I'm sorry. It could be man or woman. I'm just telling you, like marriage is not a thing. That's not a thing that exists in the world. You're not pointing to an underlying truth when you talk about the concept of, of marriage, right? Like that's like it a. No, I, I believe you are pointing to an immaterial truth of a man and a woman staying together for life. There's such a thing as marriage, an actual okay. thing. Sure. So, marriage. okay. So if we're talking about immaterial truths here, we're, we're, we're talking about the idea that marriage references some truth that's that's given to us, not by uh, not by being yeah. an entity of the world, but by some immaterial thing. Yeah. Where do you get, in, in those... this case, in this case, that word does. Sure. Yes. So this immaterial stuff that you're talking about, are you getting this from religion? Uh, it. It certainly is agreed with by my religion, but so, I mean, I, 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 I well, put it this way, I, I, I know uh, non-religious people that believe that too. Sure, but let's say that you have this, Im you have this immaterial concept now um, that that you're ref using a word to refer to. So we're already sure. now, we've already moved off to earlier. You said that these were, that these words were referring to like, well, I guess you can say an immaterial thing is an objective truth, but you can't like. Yeah. How do we even start about defining what marriage means then if you're talking about immaterial truths? Let's say I'm of a different religion than you and for me marriage is a marriage between four women Like how, how do we come to an agreement on what marriage should refer to if we're both referring to immaterial things? Well, you you but you have disagreement on any word. So yeah, it's true in another country They would say you can marry a dolphin or you can marry a bridge or you can marry four men or you can marry yourself sure. You have uh, so then, auto auto sexuals now coming up in the UK and I'm just saying those are just different levels of of incoherence to the to the one true well, definition hold, careful. of marriage, which is a man, one man and one woman. You're begging the question so much when you say it's, I am when you say it's I am, I am I am also begging the question, but I'm also stating a presupposition. Yeah, but that's not fair, right? Like you're automatic. You you win by de facto in your argument. You say, well, your definition of marriage is wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to win definition. an argument. 
I'm not trying to win an argument. I'm just trying to state what I believe. Well, but so both of us have a disagreement and both of us think that the other is incorrect. So we're trying to justify our... You you think the word marriage can mean anything? Well, I think all words can mean anything by definition. Okay, Okay. then fine. Then we have have an impasse on that. But can I continue on why I believe... Well, if we, if we, well, if we have a fundamental disagreement on how we define language, then why would we ever talk about any particular words that we define in different ways? Well, because you and I can still communicate with each other through body language or through, or we can get at what each other's ideas are. Words sure. are still useful because I believe they still are carrier. They can be carriers of truth if yeah, we're careful I mean, enough with them. If you want. If every I mean, time can... I say the word marriage, though, you're mm-hmm. thinking two men, two men, two men. I would use a different word. I would say a male and a female bonded for life recognized by the government or recognized by the church or recognized by society. Okay. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't like if you're gonna, so if, if call, you're, if call, you're, call it taco. Call it taco. Well, taco doesn't seem to have much utility in, in the world around us, right? So the, the, one of the big problems, one of the reasons why we run into this issue where marriage has to be redefined is because it's not really strictly a religious concept anymore. And the federal government, it's a federal recognized tax entity, right? If you file jointly married, and there are also special legal protections that are granted yeah. towards married people uh, as well. I'm not, I'm not making a governmental argument because the government can choose what it wants to recognize or not based on its own de- on its own benefits. So and why are you opposed vote, to gay marriage? Oh, because I don't believe government, uh, imp- you know, uh, defines morality. Do you think then that it would be okay or, okay, then we could actually agree on this. I government be, once, said, once said blacks can't vote, and I, w- I would disagree with that too. Sure. So I, so I think we can agree on this. I would be okay with the government removing the, the everything related to gay marriage if every yeah. single federal and legal benefit that married couples were recognized were removed, if all yeah. of that was removed from the legal code. Would you be okay with yeah. that? Uh, I. Yes and no. Okay. Yes, I, 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 I would believe that was at least the government trying to be fair and trying to uh, recognize its position as a secular democracy. I'd be fine with that. It, it still wouldn't make it moral. Well, I'm not right? talking about moral. And, I'm and, just saying like I, legally. My problem, my problem with the institution is the morality of it. Not, you know what I mean? Not just that the government is for it or against it. Sure, I don't sure. really care. Well, right By the way, I would also still be married to my wife if the government didn't recognize it at all. Sure. So hold on. Careful. Because we, we, we want to try to keep the argument like either on legal grounds or on moral grounds. So right now we're discussing, or at least I was, maybe I was incorrect, but I'm discussing legal grounds because that's why people advocated for gay marriage. Like people didn't advocate yeah, for I gay don't, marriage. I, I don't tend to argue legality because legal, because we, because I... Just because the law says it doesn't mean it's right in the end, we're really arguing arguing the morality of it. No, 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 no. I'm not arguing the morality of it, whether or not it's right or wrong. I'm arguing whether or not um, it should be recognized by the government. And the argument is is that the government recognizes marriages as these distinct federal entities that are granted special properties, then gay marriage should be recognized as well. As a secular government, that would be its job. So do you think that, do you agree with that or do you want to get rid of all special like endowments to, to married people? No, no, I, I, I do see a reason why the government, by the way, the government might prefer gay coupling to gay singles, right? Lifelong commitments. They may see a benefit in that. There may actually be a moral benefit to gay uh, monogamous lifelong couples to gay singles. Okay, so so the government could do that, you know, and that might be a better situation than mere uh, you know, they may they may recognize that as a governmental advantage. Okay, wait, wait. My, where I dis- where I disagree with the idea of seeing them uh, as marriage is, I don't believe a male male couple is interchangeably beneficial as a male female couple is to the government lifelong. Sure. So we're not necessarily talking about what is most beneficial to the government, just in terms of legality. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find common ground here. I don't know if we have any, but yeah, I'm yeah. trying to find it. Yeah. So I would be I'm, okay. I'm trying to be careful with what I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? On I can see why the yeah. government would prefer yeah, but I don't think the laws that we write. For life. I don't think the laws that we write should be optimized to benefit the government. And I don't think you agree with that either. So I don't know why that would be the role that we would take there because neither of us necessarily are in love with government. We don't want to write laws to only benefit the government. So I'm I'm just looking at the legal side of things. The reason why the LGBT community wants marriage to be expanded is because special protections are afforded to married couples that are recognized by the state outside of religious aspects. And gay people want access to those special recognitions. Do you think they should be allowed access? Or if not, do you think all special recognition should be removed? Or the third one is, do you think that heterosexual yeah. couples should have that and gay people should not? Which of those yeah, three? The, that's what I'm saying is I'm saying because heterosexual couples are closer to an ideal, 
the government should favor those over homosexual couples. What do you mean by favor? So you think fa homosexual couples should not be allowed to marry under the eyes of the federal government? Uh, I mean, like I just now know, but I just now said that I could see why the government would find gays being coupled for life, being beneficial, being preferable to single gays going around willy nilly. Okay. So yes or no, should gay marriage be If for no other okay? reason than, if for no other reason than to raise a family, let's sure, say. Sure. So example. should gay marriage be recognized by the federal government? Is that okay? Oh, should it be? No. Okay. Why not? Be, uh, because the... Because the the benefits that come from marriage, from uh, I'm sorry, from male female couples uh, bonded for life, are unique and better than the benefits that come from two men being uh, bonded for life. What does this have to do with whether or not the government should recognize it or not? Because the government actually does prefer certain activities to other. It makes moral claims. It says, for instance. Uh, we'll give you a tax break if you give to a charity. We like charitable giving. If you give blood or if you give whatever to, you sure, know, we, uh, we try, Special we Olympics. Generally, we generally try to keep those moral claims as secular as possible, right? We generally try to, I think, at least in we, the United States. We do, but the, but the government still has, has broad, just broad uh, favorability to giving to churches or to giving to things that we all, well, things that not all of us, but what some of us consider the good, if giving you, to Special Olympics. Okay, let's go, let's fucking super parallel would you be okay if you were a christian minority in a muslim majority country and you were forced to follow sharia law no okay do you agree that this is the exact same thing you're advocating for like a christian no. form of sharia law no okay so no. my parallel is going to be in a lot of um a lot of different sects of, of islam will say that there is a certain religious law that people should follow and there should be religious kind of um governments that enforce certain penalties on people for not following these laws how this is practiced specifically is very different in a lot of yeah. different states yeah. but but yeah that's essentially what they would say and i would say well hold on i'm secular i don't want any any type of religious law um mandated upon me so how is what you're saying where that we basically you're advocating for a form of quasi Sharia law under Christianity? No, that's not that is not yeah, true. You're, you're saying you're saying that certain religious people can have rights endowed to them via getting married, but not other people like you've defined marriage in a way that's only justifiable in a religious sense. No, no, it's it's the atheists that have the Sharia law of you will recognize two men as interchangeable as man or woman or you'll get fired. OK. How does that impact? That's, your, that's oh, wait, 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 that I, is, really specifically. Even, when we really your, specifically. Your, how does that? That's more no, no, no. law. Okay, really specifically. How does that impact two heterosexual married people if other gay people are recognized as being married? I, I well, I never said it. I am not making that argument. Okay, I never well, said that. It, side, it, I never said that it impacted them at all. Don't give my side. I'm argue with me. Well, yeah, but you said that it was like Sharia law because I'm mandating something on them. So in the case of marriage, I want to expand marriage to include. No, I said if if I vocally am against gay marriage, I will get fired. Okay, that's a totally separate argument. Though. Now we're getting into freedom of speech and whether but, or not a company but, should but be that allowed is, to But that is very Sharia-like. That is not, very that, throw a homosexual what, off, a, off a roof-like. Whether it is or isn't, that's a totally separate issue. Right now we're only it, it, talking it's, about it's marriage. Not, it's not you do you. Well, right now we're only talking about marriage right now, right? Specifically about marriage. Well, yeah, marriage. If, you, if, if you constrain them to that point you know, to win an argument, then fine. I'm only, I'm only addressing your Sharia-like argument. Who is actually more Sharia-like? Well, in this case of marriage, it would be the person denying rights to other people based on their religion. That's right. So like like, yeah, so like denying uh, a, a religious couple who believed that marriage was only male, female. So my question is, what are they being denied? If they're the, married, if, if you've got a heterosexual couple that's married, how are you hurting them or denying any rights to them? by? Also oh, in my case, it's unemployment. Well, no, no. Hate speech laws are a totally separate thing. You could live in a world where gay people can get married and you could also discriminate against gay people. These two ideas, I'm, there's a non sequitur from one to the other. I'm, totally I'm showing you there's, there is a, there is a sh Sharia law. It may not be governmental, but it's certainly casual within culture and it certainly stems from atheism. There's a Sharia law right now where if I go to a Hollywood pitch and I pitch to a gay couple and, I, and they say, what do you think of gay marriage? And I say, I'm against it. They go, oh, you're not going to be hired here. And there's no legal repercussion for that. That's hate speech. Okay, so right now— So, so I'm only saying your, your Sharia law is more in action right now in this country than mine. 
I, I, there are so many parts that I disagree with that it would take another. Yeah, two I know, hours I know you it. disagree with it, but I'm only saying using your standard. But you're not. Of, you're not. You're, you're you're taking what I'm saying and you're applying it to things that may or may not even be true. So for no, instance, no, like, you, we can you have a can't whole conversation. Your, no, Stephen, you can't use those easy arguments on me because I can I can work around. Them. These are culturally lazy arguments that you've heard repeated all over okay, the place. Well, that Christianity I, sure. is like Sharia law, and I'm saying you have to spell it out exactly sure. in what okay, way. Give me two minutes, and I'll do it real quick. Give, just give me, like Sharia law. Sure. Give me two minutes, and I will lighten my way through this. Okay. So my argument argument is that having discrimination against homosexual people getting married and denying them state funded federal benefits is a form of Sharia law. It's kind of like Sharia law because you're basically using your religion to disenfranchise groups of people. Now you are saying, well, hold on. You're taking protections, which aren't related to this disenfranchisement at all, but you're taking some protections against gay people. And now you're saying in the private sector, you're not allowed to discriminate against those people. And now you're disenfranchising other people. So you actually have the real Sharia law. However, what we can do is we can back up and we can justify the existences of these types of, of anti-discrimination laws using totally secular meanings. So for instance, I could say being able to discriminate against homosexual people or black people is something that causes a net harm to society. It has nothing to do with religious values. It is a completely secular thing. So we can arrive at anti-hate speech or, an or, or protected classes. We can arrive at these ideas using completely secular reasoning. You cannot get to gay people aren't allowed to be married using secular reasoning. One is like Sharia sure. law. The other can be justified completely ind independent of any type of religious framework. That's what I'm saying. That's why uh, I don't think these two ideas there, are connected Have there been government? Have there been governmental cases where people who will not uh, make flowers for a gay marriage uh, where they were shut down or fined by the state? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, there are. There's hundreds of them. Okay. That's Sharia law. So by your standard of maybe you, you use the word disenfranchise, but the idea that you go in and force someone to believe something by state practice, which is what Sharia law, it's a geopolitical. Uh, geopolitical religion your your geopolitical form of uh sharia you're law you're not talking about like the is, cake dudes right because they won their case yes, right you know they uh, yeah, won their case the cakes, cake dudes did but the wedding uh, photographer and the flower decorator did not okay by the state and it goes up to a higher court and it'll get so, knocked okay. down because it's so, not principled but, but, but the it's idea not sharia that, law well the idea My, that I, i'm not exercise i'm only saying it fits into the description that you just gave not, of one ideology pushing itself onto another ideology and really removing their work you your sharia law removes their jobs it removes me from twitter because if i fought that in a court case i'd lose it all the way up at some point because your belief system will be pushed on mine and mine will not be pushed on yours. I, I your understand Sharia that, law. of course. I, and, I, and, I, and I accept that. Um, okay. We get into other more complicated political things. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do this. I swear to God, I don't mean to do this. Okay. Give me 30 it's seconds. Fine. Okay. So we're, we're, what we have right now is something called the paradox of the tolerance of the intolerant. And in any tolerant society, one of the things you have to be careful I, of. I read the meme. I read the sure. meme. Sure. One of the things the we have to be careful of is being tolerant of intolerant people because they don't really function yeah. well. They hijack a society, right? They, they, there's, there's like yeah. a tit for tat game that they're playing that they'll always win. It's like a losing way of game theory. So, I agree. I, so I agree. unironically, in a liberal society, you cannot be intolerant of people that are highly discriminatory or people that will utilize your democracy or your liberalism to destroy itself, right? So if you have a society of people, it is entirely possible that we completely secularly could construct a set of laws that says, well, hold on, we are going to recognize that there are certain classes of people that we don't want people to discriminate against because they cause demonstrable harms to society. For instance, we don't want a city full yeah. of businesses yeah. that that's, can- That's word salad. Well, yeah, no, 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 okay, well, let me explain it. We don't, salad. sure, sure. So let's, let's say not word salad. Let's talk about things like redlining, okay? Let's talk about specific practices that entire cities would take where businesses would not lend to black people, not because of bad credit, not because of bad work history, but literally because they were African-American, where they wouldn't sell them certain houses, they wouldn't authorize them lines of credit, they wouldn't let them live in certain areas, they wouldn't let them have certain jobs. This creates a horrible effect in a city that will cascade all down throughout every family through generation after generation. You live in a poor house, you go to a poor school, you get a shit job, you get you yeah. do crime, repeat, 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 right? People will it. say, now people from a secular framework, from a totally secular framework, we can say, well, hold on, we want to stop these bad effects. We're going to recognize that there are classes of people that are in doubt protections in the United States because we think they are disproportionately harmed by certain businesses and we are going to stop that from happening using these laws. Nothing about what I just, so I went all the way from the from the moral thing of we should all be treated equal and have as much opportunity as possible all the way to the policy position of we should have protected classes and I didn't use religion to get there. Nothing about that journey was secular or was uh, was Sharia law. That was all secularly done, all independent Sh of any Sharia religious Sharia is, as Sharia does, it doesn't have to be religious to be 
like Sharia law. Who? Because I, I don't wait, what believe is your in definition Sharia of Sharia, law. Wait, wh how are you my, defining my, my Sharia religion, law? My religion. I'm not defending Sharia law, Stephen. Wait. My religion is not about Sharia law. I'm, but you said you guys practice it just like the Muslims. You have to still demonstrate that. And you're saying if you take this shape. And if you use enough vocabulary words to redefine words to mean you're trying to just justify taking away people's jobs. And you just did. Congratulations. I mean, in Sharia some way, law. Yes. In some way. Yes. I mean, I don't think. Yes. That... Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So if we're talking about a business owner that won't hire like war vets or black people. Yeah. Then I think societally we've decided yeah. that we can take their job because they would take more jobs than we would by taking theirs. Sure. Yeah. Sure. If that's. If that's the getcha that you're looking for, then yeah. I mean, in the United States, we have decided that there are protected classes. You can't own buildings and discriminate against families or races or ethnicities or age. And then the same thing if you're an employer. You can't discriminate against certain classes of you, people. Well, yeah. you say you can't, but people do all the time. Okay, sure, yeah, they might. We're not talking about like how people acting bad in their world. Just from a legal perspective, sure. from a legal framework, you're not allowed from to do that. From a legal perspective, people legally do that also. Well, they shouldn't be able to. I know. Well, you... but but they do in this society. I'm only saying this atheistic panacea says that if a retarded baby is born, you can stick a knife in his skull. Okay, that is, and in, that is and in your... a religious society, Catholic priests rape little boys all the time. I mean, like, yeah, what, but, what but, is yeah, this argument doesn't get us anywhere? That. I'm not defending that. So you have to argue something that I defend. Do you defend piercing a baby's skull after it's born? After it's born? I don't know anybody it's, that does. It's legal. It's in America right now. They decided it in New York. In New York, you can kill a kid after it's born? I know. Pretty psycho, huh? I'm going to need a source on that one. Okay, let's take a source break. Yeah. <laughs> Time out. Yeah. I'm going to need a source so you can murder a kid after it's born. I absolutely yeah, need a source. to eat it. New York law kill baby after birth. Interesting. Let's see. I'm looking... At huh. the very least, we can argue, Stephen, which is worse, to not give a black man a job or kill him before he gets to exist. I mean, which is more discriminatory? Hold on. Well, these are two girls. totally different. My, these are two totally are different discussions. Oh, no. It, it is atheists doing it. It is <laughs> no, atheists. No, no. I'm first saying, of all, first of all, careful, because I, as much as I hate to agree with you on this, because I'm scared to, to agree with you on anything, I am, unfortunately, I am actually pro-life. I, I disagree yeah, with the yeah, yeah, is pro-life. If you're pro-life, I'm not going to argue with you on okay. this. But, 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 but even so, I wouldn't argue that these two things are connected whatsoever. These are two I totally believe they absolutely are. Well, then at the very least, if you're going to go with experts and you're going to appeal to masses, then I would say, is it mostly atheists or evangelicals that are for killing a baby after its birth? I don't think anybody is for killing a baby after its birth. Dude, it, the, the, dude New, when New York, more evangelicals are more atheists being for passing the law that allows babies, they, it, it's ba allowing babies to be killed on the birthing table. I, I, I okay, I gotta wait. I have to wait for this. Yeah. I need to see this. Yeah. It's, it's pretty shocking. It's pretty shocking. I have it up but, on the screen right now. Yeah. New York's Reproductive Health Act was signed by Democratic yeah. Governor Andrew Cuomo on January 22nd. I'm trying to find out specifically what it says here. Um, in, okay, women may choose to have an abortion prior to 24 weeks. Pregnancies typically range from 38 to 42 weeks. After 24 weeks, such decisions must be made with the determination that there is a absence, absence of fetal of, viability or the procedure yeah. is necessary to protect the patient's life or health. That determination must be made by a healthcare practitioner, licensed, certified, or authorized under state law, acting within his or her lawful scope of practice. So this is basically saying if the fetus is non-viable, so like... I, I guess like comatose or brain dead or whatever, or if the, the no, life no, no, of the no, mother is no, born. Or, no, or retarded or severely deformed. Retar I it, don't see anything. Um, viable? Female, uh, no, fetal it, it viable. doesn't say that, but look, I, 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 can't, uh, I can't unpack the entire law of abortion that I've been studying forever. I'll only tell you that it does include that. And when they say health of the mother, they mean mental health also, meaning that if she I has- would have to, I would have to see that demonstrated in, a, in either an example or like a court case where I, a mother dude, gave birth I, to a kid and said like, well, it's gonna make me feel bad, kill it. I don't think this happens. I don't do. think this is reality. They do, they do. And if they do, what? Will you will you vote for Trump next time if they do? Let's make that case. <laughs> no, because Trump has a million out, other problems. If I can point out an actual case, will you not- Will you not be so horrified at the idea of what that party and those people do that you'll start advocating against them? Because you want to talk about discrimination. 50% of blacks are aborted in New York right now. I believe 50%. that. 
So I just I, somebody just threw me this real quick. Non viable fetus law and legal that, definition. That is the that's the clan's wet dream. A, a non viable fetus is no, that's different. First of all, if a black person chooses to get an abortion, that's different than you telling them to do it, right? Than than murdering a black no, person. No, no, because Planned Parenthood targets black neighborhoods with their with their clinics, so they get a higher count. If blacks are if blacks are somehow uh, being oppressed because they're overrepresented in our criminal justice system. Then what about blacks being aborted at over twice the rate as whites? Oh, oh my God! In our, in no, our no, 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 because these are two totally different things. Cr criminal no, no, justice. No, 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 no. no, no hold on, no, no, please. I, this is so morally different. These are night and day from difference between each other. The difference between an abortion is that it is something that you choose. Whether or not you are overrepresented in that could be indicative yeah. of another problem. Not necessarily, though. Criminal justice yeah. is something that is often inflicted upon you. So, for instance, the way that a cop treats you, the way that a judge sentences you, the way that a jury looks at you, the the the, the length, like these are things that are inflicted upon you generally against your consent when you're arrested it's usually against your consent so we would never compare the criminal justice system to access to abortions these are these are totally morally different things the idea that one is something you choose and the other is something that is inflicted upon you these are totally different things that, that yeah but don't you think it's weird that Planned Parenthood puts more of its clinics in in inner cities and poor areas where there's more African Americans being born on its face no that doesn't sound weird at all I think black people I tend mean, to be in lower socioeconomic areas yeah, and it makes sense that yeah. Planned Parenthood would be in lower yeah, socioeconomic areas would you rather areas. be called the n-word or wiped out of existence by one party I don't think which, anybody which party? is wiping anyone out of existence right now oh really 50 percent of blacks are aborted is that what's that called flourishing I don't know. Is the populate is the black population in the United States growing, shrinking, or remaining the same? Are current black people being murdered by abortion clinic? Do abortion cl do Planned Parenthood walk around with AR-15s and kill currently existing black people? No, they don't have to because they can get them in the womb instead. With, with and people get a shit eating grin saying how moral they are in doing it. Okay, well it sounds they, like they the mothers that are having guilty. abortions are choosing to do it. So are the mothers also in? Do all black women want to destroy the race of black people? Or yeah, probably. I mean, if if they. I, I can't explain, I can't get into a woman's head and explain what her motive is. I okay, can only wait, wait. say that's what, probably the best thing. I, I hate to go up with this argument, but if, I, that, I, that's probably I the can, best thing you've said in regards to abortion. So maybe we should just no, stop can, talking about no, it. No, I'm not arguing there. I'm, I'm saying what they do, the effect of what they do. I don't care what's rolling around in someone's head. For instance, you might think Trump is a racist, but he lowered black unemployment. By the way. So I, I, I don't judge what's rolling around in his head and his intentions. I see the, did he do good or bad for the black community? He did good. By Obama, way, I, don't uh, care, I don't care how woke he is. If he causes black unemployment, then I, I, I judge him on his actions. You think that's the measure of the racist tendencies of a president can be measured by a specific, by the U3 unemployment number posted yeah. by the federal government. That's how we determine I whether or not a president it's, is. It's, I can't judge it. I don't, I don't know intent. I don't know intent. I know what people do. And I think the law is a lot safer when it starts judging people on what they do versus intent. Wait, wait. Uh, I don't even know how we got to the law judging people. I don't, I don't know how we even got here. By the way, I looked up the statistics, and it looks yeah. like from 2010 to 2012, the the African American population in America grew by at least two million. Yeah. Isn't the well, white population well, in the well, U.S. That, shrinking? We're not at replacement, are we? Yeah. The white yeah. population no, tell that in the United States. Five hundred thousand who aren't there. Is that some kind of you know? I, I'll also make the argument. Then fine, using that metric. Uh, if America is such a racist place because of our slavery, whatever, more blacks have freely moved here than blacks were forced here by slavery. I mean, that sounds like a well, per so, capita so argument. Be, I mean, like there's 300 million people here now. I'm sure a ton of people live here. I mean, what? But, but, but still, it, does it make sense that they'd move to a particularly racist country? It could be less racist than other countries, but still racist in some regards. Less racist, racist than Africa? Are Africans more racist now, like the mom who's killing her kid on the abortion table? It's entirely They're possible. Leaving. It's entirely They're possible leaving. that there are other ways that you could judge a country by whether or not it's racist. It's entirely possible that one country could be highly economically destitute, which would cause you to go to another, to another country that is more racist. So it is possible that a country like Sudan yeah. might be less racist to black people than more, a country like America, but America could offer greater economic opportunity to them, more, so they would move racist, from a less racist but, country but to a more racist country. Well, hold on. I'm, I'm, right now I'm trying to demonstrate, because you just gave me a deductive argument that was not not only was it unsound, but it was totally invalid, right? You, you, you just gave me a deductive argument that said that if one person moves from one country to the next, then we can deductively say that that country no, can't son, possibly no, be No, the argument I gave was, was I judge outcome, not intent. Okay, well, but you just said that somebody moving from one country to another, that's somehow evidence that that country can't be racist. That's that's an absurd argument. That's, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm saying I would not argue their intent. I don't care why they We're not they talking came, about intent. Um, We're talking about spe specifically the argument that you just said, that if somebody moves from one country to another, that, that another country can't be racist against them.
that argument right. is totally right. not well, sequitur. Well, it? One, yeah. Likewise, just like someone can go into a country and it not be for, and they can still be racist. A uh, likewise, someone can kill their own color, and they and they have the same amount of damage, whether if they're racist or not. It doesn't matter. You're arguing intent with racism. No, and no, I'm no. You're, you out- keep bringing in like all these separate like arguments instead of just focusing on like the one thing. I'm focusing one, very one thing. It's five hundred thousand dead black people. It's five hundred thousand of in them. The United States, but a lot down. of people philosophically don't recognize fetuses and, as being people. Yeah. And Ben gave me the argument of their population in general growing as some kind of a balm or a salve. No, 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 no. The reason why he brought that up was because you made the claim. Aren't no, 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 no. You made the claim that black people were going to their extinction in the United States. Extinction generally implies a decreasing population. So uh, I no, find no, it I strange think, that you I, would say I, that they're coming I, to an I, extinction I when the population is growing. Don't argue that. You don't have to argue that because I exaggerated with extinction. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. My bad, Ben. Okay, so. A lot of people don't recognize fetuses. It's not fair for you to ascribe to them a morality that they don't subscribe to, right? Like if somebody doesn't recognize a fetus as a person and they have an abortion, you can't say that that's a murder. That's not fair. Well, okay, then maybe I maybe um, I see trans people as dogs. So okay. if I don't see if I see them as animals, then you can't uh, get mad at me for saying they go in a kennel. Um, because if you want to say that's, it, that's how, fine. That's, how, that's okay. Not, because that's how I see them. And if all of society did it, that would be okay. Well, I mean, then we would have to get into voting and we would see like where the, I guess where the. No, we would use logic to determine if they're actually valuable people. Wait, no, 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 no. We, we don't use logic to determine our laws. I mean, we would vote on it, right? Well, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So we but, would vote but, on whether but, or not their civil rights. Yeah, be but, but if you want to say that trans the, people are dogs, then I mean, that's on you. You can do that. It's your right. No, but as an yeah, American. and if you want to say babies are a mass of molecules and you can stick a scalpel in them, and I haven't committed murder, that's on you too. Wait, no, 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 no. Hold on. We just did two totally different things. Calling trans people dogs is a personal decision and a personal belief. You just in the US, now said the mother, if she doesn't want it, doesn't have to keep it. I'm saying that in the United it. States legally. We don't oh, view, legally. We don't yeah, view fetuses. Arguing, well, even I'm morally, not, morally and legally, some people don't view fetuses as some people. Some people see trans as dogs. It and they can see them as dogs. The but murdering, because, murdering trans people or killing trans people or locking them in kennels violates yeah. the law. Right now, same, having an abortion does not violate the law. Uh, same, but that, we're arguing morality and then we switch over to legality. Legality, we all know that laws okay. can be Okay, well, we can argue can morality moral, then. Look, I mean, let's argue the morality of it. What's wrong with aborting something then? If you want to abort a fetus. It's uh, it's innocent human life. How can you say that a fetus is a human? Because it's where every every single person who ever existed came from. And every single person who ever existed also came from sperm and and, and ovaries, like or, or ovums or whatever. True. Big. So it's true. You, but you're not. But you're not even differentiated as a human at the sperm and ova point point. But you are at a, at a, as a fetus. I mean, fetus means baby. It's Latin for baby. Okay. So. First of all, <laughs> the irony of you trying to use the definition of the word fetus, I'll ignore the whole earlier conversation sure. about marriage. But like, so I'm asking you, why should we endow protections of life to a, like a bundle of cells that doesn't even, if we want to talk about Plato's forms and an ideal yeah. form of a human, a fetus yeah. is not, uh, literally a human fetus up till some yeah. number of weeks, indistinguishable from like a cat or, or, or any other number yeah. of animal fetuses. Why should because we recognize a fetus as, as a, any kind of life? Yeah, your argument, I would say, is incoherent because you're actually arguing against your own existence if your mom didn't want you. But I, would, I, th- I wouldn't say that. I would say that my existence began at, at much later stages in development when I became a coherent person, when I started no, to develop Stephen, a consciousness. No, if she pulled you, if she aborted you at, at the first week, would you be here? No, but if I killed your father before oh, he no. ever— whoa, whoa, whoa. If I killed your father before he ever impregnated your mother, you wouldn't be here either. That's true. That's but not that's a logical not, argument. That is, that is apples and oranges. No, no it's, it's the not. exact same argument. You're trying to say that if you remove a certain person, then I wouldn't exist? Like, how, how does I agree. That... You, uh, Stephen, that's not even debatable, right? If I removed you at one week in the womb, you would not be here. So I'm arguing not only for the, for the life of the other people, I'm arguing for your life and mine, the right to exist. Okay. We came from that fetus, and so do other people. It's not magic. You know what I mean? If I... If I, California condor is an endangered species. If I went and took some of their eggs and made a a scrambled egg omelet, a one week old warm condor egg, uh, the state would fine me for killing condors. And I'm only saying. Hold on, this is a, this is a protected species. This is a totally separate type of argument. No, no, we, we have far more value than any condor does. 
<laughs> my point my point is I don't think it's dangerous no no Stephen my my point is when you kill the egg you kill a condor and when we kill that thing in the womb we kill you is my point and you're can't find the connection there well I, well the, I mean the connect well I mean also in the United States if you kill a mother who is pregnant or I'm sorry not if you kill a mother who's pregnant but if you damage a mother who is pregnant and her fetus dies I'm pretty sure you can bring charges against a person for murder in, as well I think that's been done in right? some in some states you can because in some states the mother has to want you before you get your constitutional rights it's sure. totally arbitrary so, now your rights come from someone wanting you Sure. So let's say let's say that I do grant you that a bundle of cells that has no consciousness, no developed brain, doesn't right. resemble a, a human in any size, shape, or form in any way. No, 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 son. It is. I'm sorry for calling you son. Sure. It it absolutely is a human. It it it's not a tree. It's not a pineapple. It doesn't look like us, but it by definition is a human, and that every human passes through that. That is part of our development. Part of our development, sure, but it doesn't resemble any form of a human. If I were to, sh if I were to hold out my hand, it doesn't look like us. Yeah, if I were to hold out a hand and show you a fetus, whatever in your head you idealize as a form of a human, this fetus would not pass any any metric whatsoever that you ever. It, no, but it is literally every single human being went through that, so it is by definition a human. I mean, you don't, you can't get around that. I mean, every human at one point was a disjointed egg and sperm as well. I, 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 I don't know. I. Let's say that let's say that I grant you that, which I'm not comfortable doing. But let's say that I even grant you that. And I say science, that is, science. What? If science says that life begins at conception, science human life begins. Science, science says human life begins at conception. Not science doesn't make that claim. So that's a philosophical. A, a claim. overwhelming number of scientists, the majority of them, say all the experts say that it begins at conception. Si si no, 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 no. Science can't tell. Science can't even tell us what life is. That's not what science does. That's a philosophical science claim. Science says human life begins at no, conception. It, no, it doesn't. Science can't make that claim. That's not a claim. I, a I mean, I, I, I can't show you the quotes right now. I'll have to look it up. But you'll I'm, you'll I'm never be able to show you. me the quotes because science can't make that claim. Science could make claims about like our DNA might exist at the moment of conception. No, or, because uh, science, science knows where human beings come from. So do you. I can't even believe you, I'm, I'm debating this with you. What do you, what um, do you mean science knows where human beings come from? Of, of course, if I destroy you in the womb, I destroy your entire life. Of course. Sure, there, there but the it, argument would be, be whether or not – what the argument is whether or not that should – that life or whatever, the hypothetical life should even be considered at that point in its development. Before it's ever even had consciousness, should we ever consider that thing as being a human life? And the way that we behave a lot of the times points to the, the idea that we don't. For instance, like a lot of women have um, – have miscarries uh, that, that they don't even know of, right? That a lot of lives are destroyed. You know, two weeks into a pregnancy, a woman might have a slightly heavier period and not even know that she's murdered her child or that her child has been aborted by her body, right? So, <clears throat> I, I mean, but but let's say that I, let's say we move past that and I grant you that. What gives that right what gives the right of, of that fetus that we'll say has some endowments of, of human life or might become a human at some point in time? It what is 100 percent as human as it needs to be at every sure. stage of development. But it can't exist 100%. on its sure. But it can't exist on its own. It needs to be a parasite in the body of another human being, right? Who's to say? Neither that can neither can someone in a co no, neither can someone in a coma. They're entirely dependent on someone else. It, we don't remove the human rights and start harvesting their organs. Sure, just but because generally, they're... generally a person in a coma has already entered into some form of social contract with a government that it exists with that it pays taxes to. Someone with all, someone with Alzheimer's. Someone with Alzheimer's. Sure, is generally ca taken care of by a state that they've paid taxes into their whole uh, life. A one-day-old baby can't take care of itself. No, but it can. It can exist in a separate physical it's, form than a mother can. The mother his could. His brain isn't fully developed. Well, I mean, technically, your brain isn't fully developed until twenty-five. But a baby he, that he exists. Does, uh, you, you don't look like a baby either. You don't look anything like a baby either. No, you look like a, a baby looks a lot closer to a human that's, than a fetus does. Absolutely. That's, that's subjective. I, it that's, is not. Well, as somebody yeah, that has like, seen lots of babies, I promise you, a baby no, looks very similar to a human being as opposed to a fetus. Yeah, it also looks very similar to a baby inside the womb. N maybe at like 30 weeks or whatever, sure, or whatever. Uh, so you'd be against it? Well, you already said that you're against abortion, so I don't even yeah, know sure. what to argue. Let, let's, say, let's say that we grant, okay, but, so I'm, I'm even willing to grant all this. We'll grant that the fetus is, is, is worthy of life, the human, blah, blah, blah. What gives that fetus the right to exist and parasite as a parasite and leech resources off of a mother that no longer consents to it being there? Why does that fetus's rights to existence trump the mother's autonomy or, or right to her own body there? Uh, it... I mean, are, do you really believe this, that it's that it leeches off the mother? I mean, it does by definition. It exists as a parasite in the body until it grows to a certain stage where it's ejected from the body, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
homeless people leech off society too. But they're not physically dependent on one other person. We elect to take care of homeless people through social policy. Everyone is physically dependent on other people. You are for your electricity and your food. So and if the right whole world now, shut down and you sat here alone, I'm not going to subject you, insulin or you sure. couldn't. So get, I'm not going to subject you to this horror. Okay. But if I were to show you my belly, okay, I have a big yeah, old belly yeah, button yeah, in the middle yeah, where I no <laughs> longer have an umbilical cord attached to me because I do not take nutrients from another person's body. So I, okay, this guy's got it. Look at that belly button. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. So he no longer yeah. is physically attached to another entity leaching resources from that person so you say not... leaching it's not leaching it's it's every person goes through that yeah every person it's... is a leech in the early stage of their development as a parasite yeah well then so are you but so are you and i off this i mean we we leech These off each things... other okay so let's say that i were to wake up one day and you and i were attached at, at the kidney because my kidney stopped working so where you have i'm running dialysis through your body are we now attached in the same way that you're attached to a homeless person you pay taxes to we both know these two things are entirely not, dissimilar. it's not identical but that's reductio absurdium I, I think you can you can push any parallels you know as long as you want till you can break it no so, i think i can make a very clear definition that doesn't slippery slope in anything else if you are physically attached to another person's body and you are taking resources from that other person in a physical not a social not a tax policy not a payment not a hand me out or whatever not a not a not a reward or a gift or whatever that that right. physical attachment is a violation of that person's autonomy and a far that is not true that is not true in fact if anything it's it's a moral obligation because that person made them what if they didn't allow, what if they didn't make them willingly it's not i mean it's still not leeching how is it not, it's not leaching? leaching resources? Okay, so let's say I take a mother who is one month pregnant and she says, you know what? I don't want this thing in my body anymore. How is it yeah. not unwillingly leaching resources from that woman's body? I mean, leech is a, are you using that morally? Like a, like a, no, I'm just descriptively. Or... It's a leech. It's something that sits there. It well, gives just, you nothing. Why, why not just call it dependent? I mean, it's okay. Sure. We dependent. can say a dependent parasite. Yeah. Oh, you it's don't like the word parasite. Cause it, Okay, because we can it, say it, it is a dependent physical being. Whatever, however, whatever euphemism you want to use to redefine it to make it feel better, it's a dependent physical no, it's not, being. It's not. You. That's not. That's disingenuous. It's not to make me feel better. It's. A, it is a fact. Well, uh, women who have children live longer than women who don't. So maybe in one way it's what you call dependent, and on another way it's extending the person's life. Yeah, but we in a liberal society, in a classic liberalism, not like liberal conservative, but like in a society where we allow people to make free choices, you would compel somebody to go through an act that they don't, that they don't uh, consent to because it might extend their life? I don't even know I'm, if that's I'm, true, I'm, by the no, way. No, I'm, I'm using the argument to counter the, that it is merely a, a leeching or a, or a draining of resources because of its dependence. I'm saying— Well, but it is draining resources. What do you mean? It, it, it is using up physical nutrients, and the mother's eating them and pa passing them on to the kid. Yeah. And then the kid, later in being born, I assume the, you know, the mother— um, the mother is fine after the birth. The mother walks around. She can. She puts the kid up for adoption, or the baby dies, or whatever. Whatever it does, it's not. It's dependence, but it doesn't make it immoral. Uh, okay. Let's say that you were to wake up in a hospital, and I was connected to your body, and I was using your kidneys to clean my blood, and we had to walk around and be together for the next nine months. Would it be yeah. immoral for me, without your consent, to take over parts of your body like that, or do you think that would be moral? It'd be okay for me to do it. Um, it would be immoral. So how is a fetus or a small human dependent thing different in this case? Uh, the fetus, first of all, is innocent. And the what does two that people, have to do with anything? It's, it, it has a right, it in and of itself, according at least to our constitution, it has a right to life. And I would say according well, to moral according law according to our constitution also. right now, it doesn't, right? Because Roe v. Wade decided that we can't have abortion, so. Yeah, yeah. It also once said blacks can't vote. But I don't, so I don't really, I'm not, I'm saying that. Well, if it, you don't care about it, then don't cite the constitution for the. I, no, I cite argument. the constitution because, because I believe the constitution using its words are pointing to immaterial truths, which is that every person is self-evident. They said that we have a right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness sure. so what and i'm asking for and it, wait and okay. if you're saying that we don't that constitution is not arguably pointing to a truth that we have a right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness then i would say at least from a legal standpoint i could not say that you coming in and using my kidneys without my permission was immoral if sure. that's where and a pregnant woman would say the same thing about a fetus using her body's resources against her consent yeah she's wrong how <laughs> 
She's wrong because it's, it's, it's immoral because it stops people like you from existing. You're arguing against your own existence. Just because something can stop somebody from existing doesn't necessarily make it wrong. You have to go farther from that. Oh, really? So, so calling someone the N-word is the horror of horrors and stopping someone from existing is, nah, some people don't exist, some people do. Let's say, that the st- let's say that the state had a program that made it so that 10 people every year had to have a child with one another. And then yeah. after 20 years, somebody I'd came up. That. I'd let's before that. Let's say after 20 years, somebody came up like, well, hold on, we should stop this program. And then somebody's like, well, hold on, you were born after this program. You're arguing against your own existence. That's not like a, that's not a counter to anything. That's like a total non sequitur, non relate. That's a totally non, whether or not I'm arguing for or against something that might hypothetically impact my existence has no bearing on the argument that I'm making. And the original argument that I'm making, to refocus and repeat it again, is why is it that a person that steals your resources once they're out of the womb, like if I attach my body to yours and ask you and ask to live with you for nine months, how is that yeah. different from a from a See, fetus? Doing stealing it from- stealing implies morality, so you can't. That's a circular argument. You can't make that in the argument. You have to use another word. Sure, that's I will. Not imp- I'll, I'll, I'll imply stealing here because stealing generally means taking something without the consent of another person, which is what it does. Does. That doesn't belong to you. No, but the mom also, it's not being stolen from the mom because her body also is autonomous in what it gives to the kid. What? No, She's not what? sitting there thinking, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, for, I'm sending nutrients to the kid. I'm sending nutrients to the kid. Her body is no more in a, a decider as the baby is. No, the no, baby's she not can taking. make that decision at any point in time. She can have an abortion. Take, yeah, Stephen, taking requires agency. The baby is not an agent that is consciously taking anything. You're, you're arguing that it's not, it's nothing. It's a clump of cells. It's, it's, it's a bod- It's no different than any other bodily function just working. Do I have a right to defend myself against somebody that tries to attack me or murder me? If they, if they, if it's like very clear, that's what's going to happen. Somebody walks into my house, they have a yes. knife and I have a gun. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's say that that person is, uh, is engaging in some sort of extreme, like, um, like sleepwalking. So that person is sleepwalking into my house. They have a knife and they're about to kill me. Do I have a right yes. to kill them to defend myself? Yes. So, yes. This is a person acting with no agency. I, I don't know about kill them, but def, but defend yourself. Sure, we'll say, say I can only do it via killing them. This is a person that is acting on me with violent with a violent action, with no intention, but they're acting on me in a violent uh, way, and I'm defending myself and my autonomy using uh, uh, any means necessary. Why is a woman not given the same permission that I would be to defend myself in this circumstance? Uh, using that hypothetical, mm-hmm. I, I, I have a hard time seeing an instance where you would absolutely have to kill a sleepwalker. I would say you could hobble him. And the same way, I, if, if the, if the, and the, the reason why it's okay to hop him is because his life has value. Okay. Well, let's so say, if let's you say... could remove the baby and put it in another, you know, and, and have it be born alive, then you could do that. You could remove it. Where does the obligation the, 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 come from to take care of You don't have to always the... go straight to kill Stephen. I know, I know our nature wants us to go there, but I'm just saying, well, we don't let's have to kill, off. we don't have to kill them. Then we can just, take let's the, hold we... off on the kill kill. Sure. So we don't have to kill the fetus. We can just remove it from the body and we can set it on a, in a basket and we can let it grow as it would. And if it dies, then it dies and we discard it. No, you have a moral obligation to take care of that thing. Why do you have a moral obligation to? Because a baby is helpless. It's what, it, why do you act like you don't know what a baby is? I'm, but if the, if the mother didn't consent for that baby to exist, sure. Then, then why does she have a moral obligation to take care of it? Where does that moral obligation come from? She doesn't have to take care of it for life. She has to birth it. Then Why does she have to birth it? That's your, that you just say that. I, I'm not trying to call you a man because, in a negative sense, but when yeah. you just say like, well, you just got to birth it. That, that's a very big process. <laughs> it's not just like you go and take a really big shit. That's like nine months of like permanently body changing stuff. Like that's a big thing to do. Uh, yeah. Um, so is killing a baby a big thing to do. An abortion is generally easier than going through a, a full term delivery pregnancy. I, I didn't say easier. I said a bigger thing as far as life being ended thing. Okay, but I'm, that still doesn't address the point of I'm asking. That's Where what, is this? No, that's what the argument is about, is about is a life being taken or not. So, you, so it's not the same thing. You know, a, a birth offers, offers you a living baby and an abortion kills a baby. Yeah, but the, but the baby that is growing in your body is without your consent stealing resources from uh, your body. Or taking, I'm sorry, not stealing. Well, I think I, we probably exhausted this topic. We're running around a yeah, circle. I don't, I don't get where you're going. I'm not going to bite on the whole dependency thing. I think it's a lame argument. But I, I mean, it I, by definition, I, is dependent on the mother's body for food. Like, yeah, I just, I don't. I, you're not gaining a ground with me on that. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Okay. I just, I, I literally, I'm, I'm on another planet. If that's, if that's where you're going, I can't, I can't even go with the premise. Okay. How's everyone doing for time? We can go longer, or I, I don't know how much time everyone has available in their schedule right now. 
I was supposed to write a script today, so I've already screwed the pooch on my schedule. So I, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. All right. I'm more about is the audience entertaining? Do you guys are are we clicking along good enough? Are we? Clicking? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. The audience is, the audience has all been saying that Doug wins. Oh, by oh, the way, we on. do have that's a not, poll. That's not fair. We we have a Twitter poll. There's a link down in the description if anyone wants to vote in that. Check that if it, out. If it helps at all, Stephen, I, I don't care what the if the audience says I win or not. I just want to. I, I I think I hope. I've been we're in both so many hostile communities. Don't worry, it's all good. Dude, I'm, a, I'm an evangelical Christian. Come on, it's it's all good. Uh, I like how I'm, it's a meme among Stephen's fans to say that he got destroyed <laughs> in a debate. Yeah. yeah, I'm only saying uh, Stephen must be formidable for it to be a big deal to say that he got destroyed. That's a compliment. <laughs> It's a compliment for them to get off on you being destroyed. It's implied that you're hard to, and they're getting great joy of it. So I'm just saying. I and I just I on these debates, you know, I want I don't want to just defend my ground for the hell of it, even if it's to defend my religion. I really do. If I'm wrong about something, I I hope I figure it out someday. I have even if, I have even if it's about question. all these things I hold dear. You know, I hope I figure it out someday. Go ahead. So, Doug, where do you stand on like a more pragmatic approach to uh, drug uh, handling the issue of of drug usage and addiction? <laughs> You've heard uh, me on you for pot all the time. So, <laughs> well, OK. So do you think, uh, you know, continuing criminality and uh, regardless of the drug itself, continu yeah. continuing criminality of a drug is better in the long run to to stopping you know, the, the bad things that come with drug usage, or do you think maybe, you know, they, we should legalize the drugs that we think are safer, like how yeah. we already have alcohol, alcohol and some places. I, I love me some alcohol and I can go for some whiskey right now. I might have to take, go take a break, but <laughs> wait, 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 you're in favor of alcohol, but you're opposed to marijuana. Yeah. Oh, and no. Then, so, yeah, I, no, no, no. Hold on, Stephen. I, I, I get, I get, Stephen, I, I get that it's totally incoherent. So I'm not sitting here saying I've got the logical struct so, on this. So taking an approach where, you know, we recognize as a as a society that certain drugs are less harmful. Yeah, yeah probably yeah, should absolutely. be legalized. And then also, uh, what about places like safe injection sites? Oh where, man, come on. No. Okay. You're going right, to keep pushing. You're going to keep pushing until you find a place where I. <laughs> uh, in in general, like my big problem with drugs, and again, I'm going to totally discredit myself as soon as this falls out of my mouth. It is with. It is with the addictive qualities bugs me the most about it because you start to take away the free will of someone down the road. So first they have free will against something addictive and then wait, wait. later Are you they arguing know against won't. alcohol or marijuana right now? I don't I don't believe alcohol unless you have a chemical disposition to alcoholism is is an addictive drug. I'm talking more about heroin, heroin, oxycodone. What about marijuana? Vicodin. Uh, marijuana I'm iffy on. I'm I'm just against that cuz so I just think uh, there's a I, just cuz I just cuz I I hate pot smoking. <laughs> you think there's a chance that marijuana could be more addictive than alcohol? I do think there's a chance, yeah. Okay. Uh, I I, I, I agree that they're that they're not. working on different parts of the brain and they're working on different chemistry. I'm saying it is it is possible. And they and they're doing studies on this right now in England, so. What about cigarettes? I'm just curious. I'm dude. I'm a huge smoker. I mean, right now I'm chewing. I've got Copenhagen in my mouth, so I'm a huge addict of tobacco. Absolute act addict of tobacco. So do you think tobacco is okay, but marijuana is not? Yeah. Even though you can't even have our conversation right now without chewing tobacco, you're going to tell me that marijuana yeah. is more addicting than. I know. I didn't. I. I'm not saying I'm. I'm against. Nothing's more addicting than cigarette than tobacco. So I'm. I'm. I'm making. I'm saying. I'm, I'm telling you it is an incoherent argument. I'm just saying that in, I'm telling you what I believe. I'm saying in general, I'm for tobacco. I'm for alcohol. I'm so, so on pot. I'm against and, the, the hype, the more hyper addictive, um, prescription medicines. And, uh, I'm, I'm generally against the state. I'm, I'm, I also have a libertarian strand in me where I see, I see it as sympathetic. I'm sympathetic to the idea of, of just making all drugs legal. I just I just see the damage as being so outrageous. I have a hard time pulling that trigger and saying, "Well, you're free to take it. How about, you get your clean how about, needles." How about yeah yeah? How about safe injection sites that are designed to prohibit the spread of bloodborne that's, illness? That's another. Also, that's another weird one because I'm I'm against the state in, 
encouraging it. But at the same time, like I said, with the, I could see why the state would say it's better to have two gay people together, maybe not call it marriage, than having them be single. I could see why the state would say a safe injection site is less bad than having no clean needles and no safe injection site. So I can, I, you know, I'm open, I'm against it, but it might be incoherent, what I believe. I mean, I don't even know if there's anything for me to respond. I yeah. I don't even. I mean, I'm, I'm, I sometimes I feel like everybody on the planet needs to fucking like drop acid like one time or eat like a fucking edible uh, or something just to have the experience because Jesus I Christ. Hate, I've never done pot. Getting high for you or, 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 or oh, doing no, like a psychedelic I've, I've would be, pills. it would be so pills. much more enjoyable for you than whatever you get out of like drinking or nicotine. Yeah. Like it's such a more enjoyable experience. The idea that people can be addicted to tobacco and, and yeah. then also decry things like getting high or having a psychedelic experience is like, that's insane to me. That is crazy to me, but it, it could very well be Steven. It could very well be, I could very well be wrong on both fronts on this, but I'm, I'm saying, um, I'm saying I, I, I'm mostly against pot and drugs because I know that if I took them, I absolutely would be addicted for life until I crashed my life into the ground. So I, that doesn't mean I have a right to take that from other people, but I know what I, the same reason why I don't play World of Warcraft. It's like, I know once I signed up for it, you know, I'd never do work again. I'd just live online. So I, it's kind of like there are, th and the problem that we're arguing here is that we're saying, should the state step in? That's just a totally different argument. I'm just, but I'm giving you the reasons why I'm against these things. And generally I'm against tobacco because I don't believe people should be a slave to anything. So I do have an intention to get off and I try to get off and then I fail and get back on. Or the same thing with Billy and food. Like I admire his fight because I see that as the same fight that I have against tobacco or against, uh, cussing or against hating people or against pornography it's like i try 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 and sometimes you fail and, and they definitely don't make food illegal though i mean yeah they don't well new york does with, uh, with big certain size soft drinks they you can just buy two in there. ban the sodas ban the sodas. Yeah, so we, i'm saying this the state is starting to make a case and it wouldn't surprise we have a sugary drink tax here in seattle so yeah it's yeah, what do you feel about that? How's that? But they're not the criminalizing it. I got they're just the taxing just it to make more time. money. I, and I do believe eventually, if if libs take over, they'll eventually make meat illegal. I don't. I don't think there's a chance of that happening. Yeah, I would love that. I love. <laughs> I meat all the fucking time. But if mm -hmm. they if they make meat illegal and the cow farts didn't kill our our, our world, <laughs> yeah. I would get rid of those cow farts. There's too I many cow farts. God damn it! Cow farts are worse than abortion in America. I'd eat meat off the grid just like you guys smoked pot before it was legal. I'd be your brother in arms <laughs> on that one. I'd be buying it for Would biker gang. Would you become a cannibal if the only nutrients and only meat nutrients no. you can get were other humans? No, Pussy. I would, before, I, would, I, would, I would have to die before I, I ate another person. The time. I'd, eat the, I'd eat the fetuses <laughs> with barbecue sauce. I don't give a shit. But would you I eat? love them. Yeah. Would you eat minorities? Because if you do, I mean, then you're racist. I, I like how I, I just like to point out that I really love that like conservatives always doomsday like the horrible things that liberals would do, but these things like yeah. never actually happen. But like conservatives, like unironically, like Trump is like banning trans people from being in the military. Like this stuff actually yeah. happens. But then we always talk about these weird hypotheticals. Well, on YouTube, I saw this video of this woman with with blue hair saying she wanted to make men in video games illegal. Like literally, like people broke into like the fucking bunkers where Hitler's yeah. dead body was found, and like the the fucking Hitler manifesto was like step one like the new marvel movie will have an all-female lead and like step two like battlefield will have a prosthetic well, it's like these are the master plans to take over mm -hmm. but then we ignore the fact that like conservatives are actually like destroying the, the country in some ways like defunding the affordable care act and leaving millions of people without affordable health care or banning trans people from the military or or like but like these are things that but i don't know yeah i'm not smart enough to debate that but i disagree <sighs> i know <laughs> I am I'm not, I'm not smart enough to debate that, but no, it's just I'm not going to sit here and go and do generalities about all these facts. And I mean, go, I'm not general. Uh, I'm citing uh, specific uh, policies. Like the conservatives did defund the Affordable Care Act. Like Trump is no, passing I, a trans military oh, yeah. ban. Like these are things that actually yeah. happen in no, the real world. I agree with those. I, I don't agree with the damage that you state. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, as somebody that cares about LGBT rights and people's access to health care, these are things that I care about. I'm not sure what. I, I care about people's access to health care and I care about LGBT rights too. But not trans people being in the military? I can see a reason why they might not work out in the military. Also, why women might not work out in the military. Don't you think we should let the military deal with that and not have some weird executive order from the president? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I yeah. agree. I okay. agree. I, but, but I mean, you do realize that the that the military serves at the uh, under the president. So I'm saying he probably. No, he, I think I, we have separate departments that make decisions about these things. Like the president is technically yeah. the head, but we have different departments that yeah. evaluate whether or not yeah. these are effective means. Trans people sure. have been vetted and if, and effectively sure. integrated into the military. This is something that's sure. already happened. Yeah. So sure. But but so you'd make the case then that Trump should not be able to ban trans and Obama should not be able to force the military to accept trans because it, the, you're saying it's not a presidential power regardless. I mean, I'm saying, well, it's, generally, it's up to the military. I, I think that we should expand the, the rights in this country to as many people as possible. So if somebody wants to say we should be more inclusive in certain things, then I think that's good. Right. Now, if the military right. needs to do ways to figure out how to make that work, I'm okay yeah. with the military doing that as well. If, yeah. it, if, it, if the case were that trans people just couldn't effectively serve in the military in any capacity, um, then I would be okay with saying, oh, okay, well, then no trans people. That, also, that's my for, position. Well, that's my position exactly. But that's, that's not position Trump's exactly. position because the military already did say that it was okay yeah, for trans dude, people to serve in the military. I'm not a Trump. I mean, I'm, oh, sure. I, okay. I well, voted that's, for the— That's what I was arguing against was that Trump— This is okay. something that Trump is pushing through, like to get yeah. rid of trans no, we're people. We're generally in agreement with that. I'm, my only beef with, uh, with trans being in the military, number one is what you said, is if an authority from the military who is making a, uh, a decent guess as to what would bring about the best coherence of troops or whatever, and if someone found out that like they just didn't work out in war or whatever, then— then I would concede to that. And if they found out that they were excellent killers and made the military better and were great soldiers and made camaraderie, I'd be all for it. Sure. Okay. Which is what trans people already seem to do, but, <laughs> but okay. I, I mean, I don't think we disagree. Yeah. 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 We've got to come, we we come up with more stuff we disagree on. Yeah. Oh uh, man. I mean, you guys didn't really get into Trump. I kind of asked about Trump, but well, I, I had a whole sheet listed up on things like, I mean, my <laughs> you did his homework, but we well, no, I just as we were talking because I yeah. disagreed with almost everything you said. I mean, my two biggest points of contention with Trump, the two most damaging things, if we ignore all the weird fascist shit or whatever, um, policy wise, um, scrapping the a a fuck, I don't remember the whole abbreviation for it. The the Iran deal, the Iran nuclear yeah. deal, yeah. um, is easily yeah. one of the worst diplomatic things in fucking recent American history that I can think of. And then scrapping the mandate for the ACA, I think these are two of the horrendous without a replacement were the most horrendous horrendously damaging, like impactful things that I think Trump has done as president. Yeah, I disagree. I don't care. Disagree. <laughs> don't care. Uh, you know, it's just to me, it's a, it's so I, I care so little about it. It's kind of moot. But um, do you agree, uh, Stephen? Do you agree with what Doug said about how we have this amazing economy going on right now, and uh, Trump is the reason? Why? Trump hasn't done anything for the economy. I mean, the economy yeah, right now is hardcore carried by like our tech companies and shit. Um, I mean, Trump did just do a fuck ton of stimulus spending, which hilariously Republicans have always been against. But I mean, Trump literally slashed taxes for a fuck ton uh, of people, I, including very wealthy people. I was people. against it. Okay, I sure. was against it. He, he, that, that tax cut came at the cost of a higher budget deficit, which again, like Republicans yeah, I was always against that too. So yeah, the idea, I don't think Trump gets any credit for our, our current economy, um, especially when most of the Trump policies that he's implemented have actually been harmful to parts of the economy. For instance, the massive trade war going on with China, even the state that I came from posted over a billion yeah. dollars in losses um, and different companies like Ford have yeah. laid off people and are yeah. partially citing that. By the way, he has more liberal support with, liberals have always supported tariffs more than Republicans and most of Trump's uh, opposition to tariffs in principle are conservatives because we tend to be against tariffs kind it depends and, on the type and, of conservative and, and, you talk and, about and protection like, well a uh, free market conservative yeah which are very rare because most free market conservatives are actually just racist tea party people in disguise <laughs> like no, for instance not, like a lot of free well for instance are you for or against like open true. borders I'm a, I'm way against open borders. So, sure. So you're not a free market conservative because you don't believe in the market regulating immigration, which is what a libertarian would say it does. No, right? no, dude. I, dude, if I walked around, I don't know what country you're from, but mm -hmm. if I, if if I want to just walk across France's border, I would expect them to throw me in jail. If well, I that actually without, wouldn't happen because France. No, nope, that's hey, nope, you, you don't need one. Nope, if, because France is part of the EU. They're also part of the Schengen area. That Schengen agreement yeah. means that you can actually cross borders in the EU without having to show a passport. So you wouldn't have to do that there. Yeah, but well, a couple of years ago, before the EU, I would have. Yeah, maybe, but not right now, because and they decided that free access you're saying and movement that's is actually good. very valuable to those countries. So, you're saying that's good, but so if if uh, a country does not say falls out of Brexit like the UK and they choose to put up gates, mm -hmm. and you can't legally 
get into that country, you'd still say you should be able to. Well, I'm a free market guy, so I would, yeah. You're, you value something more than market, some idea of nationalism yeah. or whatever, but I'm a big capitalist market guy. So the free movement yeah. of labor is a very central, yeah. important tenet you, to like economics You apply or the free yeah. market to the globe and I apply it to the U.S. That's not a free market. <laughs> that's something it's, different. It's, that's some nationalistic, uh, that's a different type of thing you're talking about. Well, the, the, this is the problem is we, we really don't have a free market even here. First of all, the, the free market is an ideal and we've never really touched it. We've come close to it and we try to, but it's, uh, it's more an ideal than anything else. But I'm saying it's more free here than most places. Okay. That has nothing to do and, with what we were just talking about though, which but, is your, but the reason why you can't observe free market globally is because other countries will put their finger on the scales and manipulate the, and inflate the value of their dollar and, and make it unfair. And so the free market only works if it is free. Well, so that's it's not why just the open that's market have, within, that's, it's not an open market with anybody anywhere. That's, right? that's why you have international, like multilateral trade agreements, like the TPP or things yeah. like the EU or things like NAFTA yeah. or like the WTO yeah. to enforce these I types agree. of regulations across the world so that you can have free markets. Sure. I agree. And Trump, by the way, he's only manipulating the TPP, um, uh, uh, allegedly well, to try T to get a more, to try and get a more fair well, the deal. No, no, no. China. The TPP is dead. Trump hates the TPP. Trump, Trump doesn't go for any fair deals because he doesn't know how to negotiate any multilateral trade agreement. I, I, that, well, that's, that's, that's a different story. Yeah. I don't, sure. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm in general, not my, my judgments of him are not granular on what he does day to day. I will say the outcome as I step back is pretty dang good. My 401k is good. Da, 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 da. All these things are good, but there are bad things like the debt. I mean, you must have like huge. you must have super loved Obama then, right? Because his economy was exploding for like seven years running. Not, I don't know about exploding, but I'm saying he. They say the free market economists say, and these are again, I don't want to appeal to all of the experts out there, but the free market economists say that he prolonged the recession because of the things that he did of like I have the car bailout. I have never like that. heard that in my entire life. The the, the tarp no. stuff was universally lauded as a good idea. It was um, terrible. Every, okay. It was terrible. Oh, uh, I was against it and I was against every Republican that voted for it. Okay. I, 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 in my understanding is that is dramatically against the economic consensus that most people agree that had TARP not happened, had interest rates not dropped to zero, which Obama doesn't control the Fed, but ha had these economic stimuluses not happened, that we would have had a much worse recession. As it stands, that recession lasted for, I, I think it was like four or five years yeah. before we completely recovered, yeah. at least in the markets. Um, all of the wealth wasn't restored proportionally to America because unfortunately the rich tend to profit off of these events. But by like 2013, we were pretty much back in the markets where we were before. Okay. And then we had massive gains for like the next four or five years until Trump came into office. Okay. Or, or but like overall, were you were you okay with us being $8 trillion in debt and then $18 trillion in debt by the time Obama left office? Um, I mean, debt is a complicated affair. Um, I, I think agree. in general, it would be probably better to reduce our debt, I think. Um, but I, I don't think the debt is as much a big deal as people make it out to be. Okay. Yeah, I'm against the debt. Why are you against the debt? I think it really destabilizes America and where we could be on the brink of a huge recession. How does the debt destabilize gained. America? Uh, because of the because of who holds the who holds the paper on it. Well, the is, largest owner of American debt right now is the United States. No, it's China. China. I'm pretty sure the U.S. is the largest holder of like treasury bond. Oh, fuck. Hold on. I got to look it up. Yeah. You know what? You you could be right. You could be right. But I, I only know that China's way up there. And I'm only saying that like if worldwide interest rates start going up and we have to pay higher interest on it, we'd be in the da in danger of an economic collapse. And again, I'm I'm not an economist. I'm uh -huh. quoting economists. I'm too dumb to figure it out. So I probably shouldn't even be stepping into these waters. I'm only saying I believe it hardcore. I'm against the debt. And that's it. Uh, Steven, I don't even know if you want to get into this, but sure. people... just to be clear, just real quick. So our debt is $21.21 trillion. Foreign yeah. investors hold less than 30% of that debt. Um, oh, that's fair. most of it is hold domestically. But okay. People keep asking for the incest debate. I don't know if you think that's, Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I want to do this right now. <laughs> I'm good. But, but what just, is the incest just, debate? But I've, I, I've seen him debate incest, uh, with people before on yeah. his in his videos like Pornhub style incest where it's stepbrothers on my entire front page stepbrothers oh, banging their stepsister well, my entire front page it's all like stepbrother takes what if over. a normal person's watching this show really oh really? yeah I forgot your parents watch. sorry yeah, parents. My, my parents watched the first time i was on this show <laughs> you know what you know what though billy's mom is a big fan of yours doug 
Oh, oh, good, good lady. We like her. Yeah. <laughs> she she texted me to tell me that you were banned from Twitter. Oh, oh what's her yeah. name? What is her name? I would rather not tell people yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but just uh, so for your mom, I just say uh, I it's I love you. Thanks for your support. I'm gonna try and do you right. Happy birthday, Doug. Today's her birthday. birthday. It's my mom's birthday. We, we wish her happy birthday. Dude, happy birthday, Billy's mom. You know what? If you weren't born, then Billy wouldn't be born. Yeah. Do you think if Billy you murder one person, born. you should actually be charged with like a thousand murders because you actually prevent don't the being like? Don't be murdering Billy's yeah. mom, man. Don't be. Don't. Holy she's shit. my fan. She's my girl. I think statistically, one of those babies in the line of birth would have been an incel and not gotten anybody pregnant so. Yeah, so we should figure out the average like life tree or like family tree yeah. of a person and anytime you murder someone you should be charged with that many murders because you're preventing you know, that much potential I, yeah you when, should, when should I be lived, determined by uh, how hot the mom is when I lived, anyways happy birthday to billy's mom i love you so thank you so much for and thanks for for keeping tabs on me on twitter i'm you know it's a little lonelier when you get your account wiped out and nobody notices so you when, notice uh, so thank you when I lived in Ohio, there was a law where if someone killed a pregnant woman, they got charged for two murders. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how common that I think is. That's like a state, I think that's like a case by case it's, thing. It's state by state. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. So, so again, is, it, is that equal protection under the law when in one state your rights come from your mom wanting you and another state comes from your, just your ability to exist? It's like, uh, I think it's unfair. And I don't think everyone should have, I don't think anyone should have the right to have their life taken from them. <laughs> so and should a mom the, have the right? Yeah, that's what the pro-choice people argue, that you shouldn't be allowed to take the life of a mother and force her to be a surrogate for nine months for something growing inside of her against her consent. That is, that is <laughs> not what they argue. That is not, they argue <laughs> that, that there's the only argument. one. They argue there's only one person. It's not two people to be argued for. So they're saying one person has a right to privacy and the right to her body. And the other person does not have a right. It's not a person. The, in the Supreme Court, the formal decision in Roe v. Wade said that the, the court can't know, so we won't decide. Wink, wink. Do what you want to do. And they, so, the, so they really they refuse to defend the unborn life as uh, having civil rights. And I'm for the civil rights of the unborn. There's a tea that a woman can drink, right? And any time the woman is drinking the tea, she's perfectly fine. But if she happens to have a freeloader in her womb, the freeloader will be evicted. Can she no longer drink that tea just because she's got a freeloader inside of her womb? I mean, if you're asking me, I wouldn't I wouldn't allow that tea to be sold. But she could it's... drink the tea when the freeloader's not there. Why does she have to stop drinking this tea just because there's a little punk ass baby in her womb? Punk ass bed punk ass baby's you. Billy, punk it's you. I'm I'm here arguing for your life. My Ooh. mom tried to get rid of me twice. <laughs> really? Well, well, after I was born, <laughs> she's going to kick me out. Yeah. She was like, get out of the house. I'm like, mom, no. Yeah. And you were 29 years old and you're like, yeah, no, man, I'm staying yeah, here. It's I'm just, as a fetus. Stay right here. I've been here for 29 years. Like, get out of yeah. the house. I'm with her. Billy, I'm with her. Get the hell what? out of the house. Oh, now you don't care about the child's life. Fuck you, Doug. <laughs> No, no, it's because I care about you. I want you out and self-dependent. Wait, hold oh, on. This is, it's the perfect meme. Are you for or against, like, welfare in general? Uh, I'm, in, you, know, that's a, that, you know, that's a trick question. So, yeah, I'm, well, it's a tr I'm It's for, a trick question because I'm trying to catch you on is to see if you're, like, very big on, like, protecting the life of the baby up until it's born. But once it's born, you don't care about providing assistance to it anymore. That's, that's no, no, the trick yeah, question I, I that's don't, coming. I don't believe that at all. And not only do I believe in, in the government, you know, helping, assisting, and paying for uh, in, impoverished young families, but I personally devote my life to helping uh, single pregnant moms to make it easier on them so they won't choose abortion. My wife and I are involved in ministries that help help them uh, with their health and with their food and with their clothing and stuff like that so that they are m more likely to not use the argument of I can't afford it. And if they choose to keep the baby, we, we want to help them as young moms. Thank you, Doug. Love him too. Thanks, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom loves you, Doug. She should. She's a we're we're kindred spirits. We're kindred spirits. <laughs> she says Doug wins. Yeah, your your mom and I have more in common than you two do, and you even share DNA. Yeah, my mom's an artist. Oh yeah, see my art people. Yeah, I gotta send her some art. I gotta make her tell her ask her to request something from me. I'll make her something and mail it to her. 
Okay. Some art. I'll, I, I want to, and I want, if she's an artist, I want some of her art too hanging in my studio. Right. Put her, well, put her right back there on the wall right there. So, you know. She's also a Christian, so she'll probably like, uh, yeah. You know, Tell her to do the holiest paint. art, the awesomest job she can do. <laughs> uh, all, all. Someone, uh, someone sent in a Streamlabs earlier said, what's Doug's opinion on Earthworm Jim 3D for Nintendo 64? It's, uh, that is the worst trash garbage tier game that should have been aborted. That's the only thing I'm for abortion is aborting Jim. <laughs> oh, no, oh, it's Jim, interesting Jim's... that you use the word abortion there in a different meaning than how we'd all previously agree that it should be used. It's almost like language evolves to take on different meanings based on. <laughs> it's the only moral use of abortion. So when the royalty check came in, Doug, you were like, nope, can't accept this garbage. I got a very small royalty check from it and oh. I would have been glad. In fact, I, when they sent the, what happened was we went with a different company than the people who made the first two. So the first two was me and the team. Um, I left right before the second game was finished and the third game, they just parsed it out to a third, whatever, uh, company that was barely capable of making this game. I read the game design document. They said, you have a right to creative approval. And I said, I don't approve of this game. I don't approve of the gameplay. I don't approve of the writing. I don't approve of the characters they come up with. This is not earthworm Jim. And they said, okay, thank you. Goodbye. We're doing this for the money. And they went off and made the game and it was terrible. That's my opinion of it. Does not hold up to Jim 1 and 2, which was a long time ago. Look, man, 25 years ago. I just got Steven, a few Steven, you play Earthworm Jim, Steven? Um, I played the Sega game growing up, but only oh, cool. the one on the Sega Genesis, yeah. Hey, I saw you playing a game on your stream. What was the one where you're going around shooting everything, shooting all these monsters? It's a uh, three-quarter top-down kind of adventure-looking game. Was there it? was like scorpion demons and stuff, and you're shooting them. You were you were doing a, a stream while you were. How long ago? Oh, two years ago. Was it Doom? No, it didn't look like Doom. Look kind of like Diablo, but not Diablo. Uh, like Diablo Path of Exile. Three. That could be it. Probably that. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. Bye, curious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got another one from Black Hat. Hey guys, I'm turning 21 this Sunday, so please wish me a happy birthday. And St. Patrick's Day. Love you, Billy. Love you, too. Yeah. Happy look birthday. At this, look at all this love. Yeah, How's we the weight loss, Billy? Are you still on it? I see you post your weight, and I get so happy. You were down to 350. Yeah, I'm I'm about to break that mark, I guess. I don't know. I'm still still working on it. Trying Dude, to... you get down to 49. It's like, that's a big number. Three... I started at like 600 or so, so I was Holy a big... Cow ball of large yeah and about a year like it's been about a year and three months and he's lost like o over 300 right no, not over or no 250 over 200 yeah Dude, okay you should if you made a documentary of this like if you're doing interviews and stuff and you could cut the video out of this and make a documentary you'd make millions of dollars on that of just your yeah. i lost like 300 something pounds in one year man who doesn't want <laughs> to see that <laughs> Someone, uh, Cunty Cat, send in one said, "Thanks for hosting this debate between Endless Jess and Brett Keen. You guys keep up the amazing work. Thank you, uh, Fidel Castro." Wait, you have uh, to explain that to me because I'm not a internet knob. What does he mean? Oh, right. just I guess he's trying to say you res. I, I don't know what they're. You guys must look, or I, I don't I, think I, they look like yeah, either yeah. of them. I don't know what that's all about. We don't get it either, but we appreciate the money. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, we <laughs> like even those jokes that we don't get, as long as the super chats keep coming, as long as the money keeps coming. Fidel Castro came in uh, for three dollars. Destiny, I believe in free markets. Also, Destiny lets use socialist policies to improve society. Fuck America. Oh. Nice. So I don't believe in free markets as an end to themselves. I literally said that I think that free markets generally deliver the most good that can be delivered generally, but there are also market failures that have to be addressed using other means. Um, I wish I had like an easier way to wrap that up in a way that like a 15 year old libertarian might understand, but maybe he'll find the answers to all of his economic woes buried in the fountainhead or some other equally intelligent Ayn Rand novel. <laughs> or or Milt Friedman's, Friedman's writings. Milt Friedman is a good economist, and Thomas Sowell. They're good. They're solid. Hey, and if you guys like uh, debates like this one between Stephen and I, why don't you get this show up to the bonus show, Money? Get oh, you go in there. It's definitely going to happen. Uh, and we still have quite a few days left. So, so if they yeah, throw we, a bunch of cheddar in there right now, wouldn't you say, how much is that? That's only $224. Yeah, it'll be Dude, all That's right. nothing. You can't raise, you can raise that right now. <laughs> yeah. Someone, uh, oh, you know what? Dusty's owner came in. Can 
can Doug and Dustiny put aside their differences and agree that Dusty the Cockatiel is a beautiful bird? I've already said this on your show before. I said, (laughs) who's the beautiful bird? Dusty is. Yeah, there's, there's this guy that's a fan of our show, and sometimes he'll become a patron to where he can appear on the show, and he just has his cockatiel. Yeah. Steven, on, so on without even seeing time. this seeing this cockatiel and knowing if it, in fact, <laughs> is beautiful or not, could you do you love, the words? Can you principally say... Do you love say, the cockatiel? Is he a beautiful bird? Do you love beautiful Can you bird? say that? A, what, I have no idea what I'm being asked. <laughs> <laughs> You're being asked to call a cockatiel beautiful. I'm sure yeah. it's a beautiful bird, sure. <laughs> Okay. Can, yeah. you fake more, can you fake more? It's like Matrix, too. It's like you have to make me believe this it. Guy also can you fake enthusiasm? I'm really the, bad at it. I'm really bad at even showing genuine enthusiasm. So <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. The, um, the guy with the bird paid Sinbad. And, or no, no. He paid Kevin Sorbo and Tom Arnold to make videos to us. Uh, it's top quality it's content weird. right there. He also does videos where he walks around like Target and Walmart and just rips ass Fart. near people. Farts. Yeah. <laughs> and makes yeah. one-liner jokes. He, he did it to like Santa Claus at the mall and stuff. I, don't, I, don't I can't know. stop laughing. I think it's really funny. It's yeah. immoral that I'm laughing at. I find it really yeah. funny. Crop okay. dusting. I love it's you guys the... very much, but I have like another podcast I need to do like fairly soon. Oh, sure. So... Oh, Mr. Whoa. No, no, cool. I really, hey, pre- I've, hey, I've got all kinds of podcasts to do I'm too, sorry. guys. I, I better it. be. Holy no, no, no. That's okay. Yeah. Any... Tom, Han- Tom Hanks. I'm on a <laughs> conference call with Tom Hanks. Hold yeah. on a sec. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We but... went a little bit longer than usual anyway. Yeah. So I appreciate both you guys being on. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Doug. Check them out in the uh, description. Their links are in the description. Follow them both. I need subs. And hey, Stephen, thanks for this uh, debate. I appreciate your candor. I appreciate the way you think. And I think uh, you gave me a lot to think about. So thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate the conversation as well. Yeah, it was good. Anytime. Anytime, bro. Don't be sad. I'm, it's me. Uncle Doug's here. Everything's good. We're good. <laughs> I got a smile out of him, brother. We're good. I'll see you. I'll see you on another show. Okay. All right. Have see fun, my friends. I'll see you guys later. Later. Sure.